Virginia Cavalier Dan Bonner. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to ACC Sunday Night Hoops. After a trip to the Final Four a season ago, expectations have been high all year at Maryland. And why not, Dan? But when you talk to their players and you talk to Gary Williams, goal number one, win their first ACC regular season championship in 22 years. Tom, and I really like where the Terrapins are sitting as they look at that goal. They're playing real well right at the moment. They're in a nice rhythm. They have a good rotation. And they've got most of their tough games coming at home. This is what the uh, kind of thing that Maryland has done. Obviously, the number three team in the country, they're pretty good. However, even though they've got those good teams, including Duke, coming to cold down the stretch, they've got to play on the road tonight. And the way you play on the road is you don't forget what you do best, and that's throw the ball inside to Lonnie Baxter. For North Carolina, the tradition rich Tar Heels have had to suffer through a disastrous season, to say the least. And while a win tonight, Dan, wouldn't make their year, it'd make it a whole lot better. Well, it really would. Part of the problem for the Tar Heels is they happen to be the weakest where the other teams in the league are the strongest, particularly a team like Maryland I'm talking about at the guard spot you've got a sophomore like Adam Boone on the one hand you've got the veteran like Juan Dixon on the other the last time these, te these two teams played you saw that disparity in an area where it's very obvious and that is turnovers these are the leading turnover guys this is the leaderboard you never want to be on Tom North Carolina turned it over 25 times. 19 of those were Maryland steals. The Tar Heels simply cannot do that. Maryland scored 112 points in that game at College Park. But they're hoping to get it turned around tonight in Chapel Hill. Kevin, they're ready to roll, and we know you are in Los Angeles. As always, we're ready to roll, Tommy, and you know it'll be a different flavor once you move down to the Dean Dome. Carolina always plays well down there. Welcome inside the house that Hoops built. I'm Kevin Frazier, and this is the exclusive home of ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Also seems to be the perfect place for the Maryland Terps to play because so far this season, Gary Williams' team is a perfect 4-0 on Sunday Night Hoops. Now, it all started back in December when the Terps overwhelmed Detroit Mercy. And then later in the month, Maryland opened up conference play with a seven-point win over North Carolina State. That was followed by a mid-January shootout against Clemson as Chris Wilcox dropped 17 on the Tigers. And just last week, the Terps got their second win over the Wolfpack and fourth right here on Sunday night. Think what you want, but the numbers don't lie. On Sunday nights, the Terps are shooting a sizzling 48% from the floor and have won the four games by an average of 14 points. In other words, Maryland digs Sunday night hoops. On the way, we'll check in on other games in the ACC today, including an all-important game for Virginia. Can the Cavaliers get a little revenge against Clemson for the 16-point spanking that the Tigers applied last month? You're watching ACC Sunday Night Hoops. This notebook is bound to raise a few eyebrows. It's got a laser-sharp screen, a DVD CDRW combo drive, a high-performance mobile Intel Pentium 3 processor M, and the power to turn heads. Envious? Why? It's just $14.49 thanks to $150 worth of instant rebates when you buy direct. The Compact Rosario 1700T Notebook. Call 1-888-271-1826 for yours now and you'll also get free shipping. A year ago, I'm a bummer. I'm seeing hair here and hair there, so I started using Rogaine. Simple, safe, clinically proven to regrow hair. Look, nothing here, nothing here. It's all here. Rogaine, stronger than heredity. Dear Kurt, how is training camp? Are you getting along with the other boys? This new chunky soup will fill you up right after a fun-filled day. No, no, no! New chunky beef rib roast with potatoes is loaded with lean chunks of savory rib roast for a taste of home while you're away. Lights out! I miss you, pumpkin. Love, Mom. <laughs> You all right, Kurt? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. New Campbell's Chunky Home Style Classics. Like Mom used to make. Call Domino's for a free order of oven fresh cinnamon sticks when you buy any large one topping pizza for $9.99. Sprinkled with cinnamon sugar and served with creamy icing, they're tough to resist. So call now, because at Domino's, we've got the dinner thing covered. Get the door, it's Domino's. Byron Mouton averages 11 points a game, but against Carolina, he has raised that average by six points. Mouton, one of the reasons the Terps are tied atop the conference with just one loss. According to Virginia coach Pete Gillen, after dropping four straight, the Cavaliers are, quote, at a crossroads. Either we will fold our tent or we'll come out swinging. The Cavaliers hosting Clemson and trying to get back to 500 in conference play. 
Travis Watson trying to get him there. He had a double-double on the afternoon, 20 points and 10 rebounds. Virginia up 44-39, but second half, watch Clemson banging the glass. Chris Hobbs, the effort. Tigers trail by just three. Cavaliers pull away because their main man steps up. Roger Mason Jr., the spicy jack in the finish. He had 23 points. Virginia goes on to win 85 to 71. Virginia snaps its four-game skid. Clemson, meanwhile, has dropped eight straight. More ACC hoops. North Carolina State, Florida State. Great ball movement by the Seminoles. Trevor Harvey, the strong slam. Seminoles down by three and a half. Second half and Wolfpack come out on fire. Scooter Cheryl, great backdoor cut. He had 16 points. The lead for State would grow to as many as 18, but Florida State answers. Delvon Harrington, if he's not dropping an assist, he's dropping it in the bucket. He had 19 points. Seminoles got as close as four, but Anthony Grundy, he's the daddy for Carolina. He had 13, and the Wolfpack goes on to win 76 to 67. So State improves to seven and four in conference play. 18 and 6 overall. They visit Duke on Thursday. Here's where things stand at this moment in the ACC. The key here is that Duke, Maryland, and Wake Forest play each other once more, and that could dramatically change the way the standings look. And speaking of Wake Forest, next week in a key conference matchup, Skip Prosser and the Demon Deacons faces former boss Pete Gillen and the Virginia Cavaliers right here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. By the way, our special guest. The greatest point guard in Wake Forest history. Muggsy Bogues will join our broadcast team tip off at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. But up next, we're headed back to Carolina. You know, the one guy who seems to thrive against Maryland, Jason Capel. The senior is one of just three Carolina players to score 1,000 points, grab seven. Jason Capel always seems to go to work against Maryland. Twice he scored a career-high 27 points against the Terps. Carolina could use another big effort from the senior. Hey, one other note. Keep this in mind. Before you write the Tar Heels off, under Matt Doherty, Carolina is 2-1 versus Maryland. And the big key here, rebounding. Carolina averaging 36 boards against the Terps. So they got to hit the glass. Hit the glass. All right, let's quickly head back to the Dean Dome where Dwayne Bowne is standing by with our special guest for the evening. Dwayne? Kevin, in 1974, a young man arrived at Carolina who would be one of the finest forwards to ever play the game. He wore number 24. He was an All-AC selection twice, lead the Tar Heels to two ACC championships and a Final Four. He would exit Chapel Hill as ninth on the all-time scoring list. Walter Davis, number 24, and his jersey is now retired in the Raptors, one of the all-time greats at Carolina. They still call him Sweet D for that jump shot and the way it went in. Welcome to ACC Sunday Night Hoops, Walter. Thank you, Dwayne. Uh, the last time that North Carolina was in this position in that this team is unlikely will make the NCAA tournament barring a miracle, you're on a team. 74. That's a tough position for a North Carolina team to be in. Yes, I think that was the last time they didn't make the NCAA uh, tournament. We lost to Maryland in the ACC uh, uh, sec, uh, second game, and then uh, we lost to Purdue. We decided to go to the NIT and lost to Purdue in the first round. You were chatting with Matt Doherty just before we began the game. What does he say to his team at this juncture? Well, he wants the team to stay competitive and really try to give them a story of how we used to play pickup games in the summertime and nobody wanted to lose. If you lost the game, you were a little upset and it was just pickup. So he wants this team to kind of have that attitude. The Red Walter Davis will be our guest on ACC Sunday Night Hoops here from the Smith Center at Chapel Hill. Kevin? Dwayne, thanks a lot. And you know what? You want to talk about the sweetest jumper ever? Walter Davis' jumper, just as pure as they come. All right, let's quickly get you caught up with a few top 25 scores from today. Troy Bell dropped 24 as number 12. Miami was upset by BC for the second time in less than two weeks. Another upset. Damon Jackson scored 24 points, and Melvin Eli notched another double-double as Fresno State snuck by number 14, Oklahoma State. The upsets continue. Michigan State knocks number 16, Ohio State, out of a tie with Indiana atop the Big Ten standings. And we finish with another surprise, despite 28 points from Preston Shumpert, number 23 Syracuse, upset by Pittsburgh. We, of course, will be back at the half with the ACC remix and highlights from all those top 25 upsets. But up next, it's Juan Dixon and the Terps invading Chapel Hill to take on Carolina, Maryland, North Carolina, right here on Sunday Night Hoops. So, 
Set up a department meeting for tomorrow and put in a call to the client. Get them up to speed. Anything else? Here's a thought. Instead of saving money by not using paper, we could just go to Staples. Yeah, with Staples 365 savings, they compare prices and back it up with a 110% price match guarantee. I like that. Jot that down. Low prices on every item, every day. Staples 365 savings. Yeah, we've got that. Brown makes work easy. Brown helps me get it done. Brown keeps track of my addresses. Brown tells people their shipments are coming. Brown even prints the labels for me. Brown takes care of me. I love Brown. Desktop shipping made easy. What can Brown do for you? Come to Pep Boys, where Jack's been cutting prices on hundreds of items like high-quality 80,000-mile Futura tires, now as low as four for one fifty-nine, or 55,000-mile Futura tires as low as four for one twenty-nine. Get an incredible deal on tires today at Pep Boys. New 255 horsepower Nissan Maxima. Call Domino's for a free order of oven fresh cinna sticks when you buy any large one topping pizza for $9.99. Sprinkled with cinnamon sugar and served with creamy icing, they're tough to resist. So call now, because at Domino's, we've got the dinner thing covered. Get the door, it's Domino's. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Staples. Yeah, we've got that. And by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Welcome back to Chapel Hill, and here are tonight's UPS starting lineups. We begin with the visiting Maryland Terrapins, 18 and 3 on the year. The seniors, Mouton and Baxter, both 1,000 point scores to go with a talented sophomore from nearby Whiteville, North Carolina, Chris Wilcox, and the veteran duo in the backcourt, Blake, among the nation's assist leaders, Dixon making a bid for National Player of the Year honors. And Gary Williams, a 56-year-old native of Collingswood, New Jersey, took his alma mater to its first ever Final Four one season ago. For the Carolina Tar Heels, up front, the seniors, Capel and Lang, with the freshman, Jackie Manuel. They've really struggled in the backcourt, and Matt Doherty has tried to mix and match a combination. Tonight, he goes with Adam Boone, and Brian Morrison, the native of Redmond, Washington. Matt Doherty, an alum of North Carolina. He's lost as many games as head coach in two years as he lost in four years as a player in North Carolina. And rather than ask Coach Doherty for tonight's scouting report on Maryland, we asked his senior, Chris Lang. Steve Blake, great point guard, he can dish off the ball. Um, Juan Dixon, scorer, great defender. Um, Lonnie Baxter, Chris Wilcox, both great athletes, big men, can score, rebound, lock shots. Um, they're a great all-around team. I'm surprised they've actually lost a game in the ACC because they're a very impressive team. Well, the Carolina band trying to get the Tar Heels fired up. It would be an enormous upset. It's hard to believe we're ever saying that, Dan Bonner, here in Chapel Hill for North Carolina to pull off an upset. Time for our Lexus game plan. Let her rip, Coach. Maryland wants to keep it rolling. They've been playing very well, and one of the things that they have to do is hit on all cylinders. They have to get a good inside-outside combination. For North Carolina, they're struggling, and when you struggle, you tend to think you have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect. They're going to make some mistakes. They need to make some positive plays, or the positive plays have to far outnumber the negative plays, particularly in a game like this. Our official tonight, Carl Hess, Mike Wood, Mike Kitts. Chris Wilcox and Chris Lang set to tip it off from the Dean Smith Center at Chapel Hill. And we are underway as Blake will run it down as Maryland controls the opening tip. And North Carolina starts in a man-to-man. -man. And interestingly enough, Jackie Manuel starting 
And now he's starting instead of Wilt Johnson because they're going to try to match him up against Mouton. That is a very difficult matchup for North Carolina. If you're Maryland, where do you attack right away? If I'm Maryland, I get the ball to Lonnie Baxter as soon as I can. Oh! Baxter off the Wilcox miss. And that's why. Lonnie Baxter, the senior out of Silver Spring, Maryland, the second leading scorer at 15 per game. And here's Maryland with some pressure. Remember, Maryland had 19 steals the first time these two teams played. Morrison misses his first shot and saved nicely out of bounds by Bouton. Maryland's really going to look to push the ball. That's the way they play, and they think they have a tremendous advantage against North Carolina in that department. Wilcox working on the line was hacked. I Brian, believe by Brian Morrison. Brian Morrison's going to pick up that foul, and for Morrison, he is probably the quickest North Carolina player. What he has to do, Tom, is get there when Wilcox is dribbling the ball. By the time Wilcox picks up the dribble, they're not going to allow a little guy to take it from the big guy. They go right into Baxter, muscles his way to the basket, can't finish it, and Boone pushes ahead to Caper the other way. turns it over at the other end. Gary Williams isn't upset by that turnover. Maryland plays quickly. They're going to throw the ball out the door a few times. Matt Doherty's the guy who's got to worry about his team and turnovers, particularly against this type of Maryland press. And really this year for North Carolina, what you're seeing right here, Diane Dan, has been an adventure just getting it across half court. Rejected there by Baxter. But you heard Chris Lang talking about before the game. Maryland's got some guys who can block shots. So even when you beat the pressure and you think you have an easy one, they've got guys who can take it away from them. Great feed. Blake down to Mouton, and he lays it in. Byron Mouton, the transfer from Tulane, who averages 11 a game. Maryland just wears you out with that play. Cut off the low screen. It's called the flex cut in the vernacular. And they just wear you out with it. Miss Morrison misses from three and Blake pushes ahead. Blake an attack point guard. Oh, what a catch! What a catch by Baxter! And that's what you're talking about, an attack point guard. You go down, he threw a laser. 6-2 Maryland. Capel for three in the corner. Bingo. That's what you want to do. They have beaten the press. You want to attack. A bad sign for them and for North Carolina is that Morrison has missed two wide open ones early. But if Morrison can get going, this could be interesting. Luton off the screen, little jumper, and look at Wilcox throw it down in the paint. Wow. Wilcox has made some of the most spectacular dunks and athletic plays we've seen all year. And Morrison now nails the open three. If you don't steal the ball, some open looks and North Carolina finally knocks down that one. They've had made two consecutive threes. That's just power in there. That's just power. He had Lang and Manuel all over him and Baxter still catches it and lays it in. Well, you said it, Dan Bonner. Go to Lonnie Baxter early. He has six at Maryland's first ten. There's Morrison. Head fake. He's with us now one or missed three out of four. That's the one they've got to have if they're going to stay in the game. Luton, the short jumper. Maryland is just relentless, and what, what you see them doing is driving the North Carolina defense down to the baseline and then throwing it to their big guys for easy baskets. Carolina's got to get it over the timeline. They just beat the 10-second clock. Good bounce pass to Lang, offensive foul. Lonnie Baxter draws the charge right there, but the Maryland big guys have been very impressive on the offensive, and that is a great catch by Baxter, created by the fact that he runs the court very well. Now, watch as Mouton shoots the ball. Capel goes to Mouton. Nobody rotates, rotates over for Wilcox. And I'll tell you what, you better find Wilcox. He is all around the basket. And Maryland scoring all their points inside. 12-8 Terrapins. Four minutes have gone by from here at the Smith Center. Great to have you with us for ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Baxter, good head fake, goes to the basket and draws a foul. Brian Burstiker whistled for the infraction. He's just come on for Matt Doherty. 
And, and one of the things Brian Burstecker has been sitting over there on the bench and it's tough to get in and start playing right away. But one of the things that you never want to do is go for that pump fake by Lonnie Baxter. If that man wants to shoot the ball from 15 feet you let him. If there is an area of concern for Maryland looking ahead not only to the remainder of the regular season the ACC tournament but further ahead into March their free throw shoot and Baxter is a guy who goes to the line so frequently he hits both there but only 58 percent on the year. Good start for Gary Williams team they lead by six. I felt like she was in the house. Emily's dead Joe. Between this world and the next. Is about to be crossed. Yeah. A message is about to be passed. And a journey is about to begin. Dragonfly, at PG 13, and theaters Friday, February 22nd. Will she feel the same way if you lose your hair? Sure. She'll just feel it about somebody else. Relax. Rogaine. It's simple, safe, and clinically proven to regrow hair. Does she want you to use Rogaine? Better ask. When reviewing the Lexus LS 430, Automobile Magazine said, No car in this class has more inviting leather, a more comfortable ride, a superior stereo, or a more logical navigation system. Perhaps this is why, for the second year in a row, Automobile Magazine has named the LS 430 the best luxury car over $40,000. To its owners, it's the best luxury sedan in the world. The LS430 at your Lexus dealer. The course, inspiring. At this time on the number one team, Tatum Ranch would like to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Anderson. Tatum Ranch Golf Club is now private. The club, brand new. The future is filled with new beginnings. Tatum Ranch, make it yours. Private memberships available now. You're never as, as good as they say. You're never as bad as they say. Somewhere in the middle lies the truth. And, uh, you know, last year we had some really high highs, and this year we're having some really low lows. And I think that uh, I've learned a lot about patience. I've, I've tried to stay positive through a difficult time. Uh, I've tried to uh, protect, you know, our players as best I can um, and uh, teach some life lessons through this. And a rough start indeed for the Tar Heels. The season began at 0-3. They went 5-2 and in December, but now for the first time ever, and we could say that a lot in a number of statistical categories, certainly this season for North Carolina, Dan. They dropped 9 of 10. A lot of these guys came to North Carolina partly because of the history and tradition of North Carolina, but that's really been a burden for them this year because it's the first time for this and the first time for that, and that gets tiring after a while, particularly when all those first were negative. Cross court to Boone for three. Can't get it to go. In a game like this, you have to make a very high percentage of open jump shots, and North Carolina just hadn't done that early. How about that cross court bounce pass? Blake to Dixon, and Juan has his first bucket of the game. Maryland has made seven of ten shots, and one of the reasons is they've gotten close, good ones. North Carolina has had some wide open ones that they haven't been able to knock down. Man to man for Maryland. Dixon pulls up for three. Bingo. Juan Dixon averaging 19 and a half points per game for the second time in the last four weeks. He was voted the ACC's player of the week. He might be the ACC's player of the year. And now we're in a real danger zone for North Carolina. Again, not very good patience that time. That was a contested jump shot, but when you miss shots like that, it allows Maryland to get out and run. Baxter wasn't ready for the pass. That was a good pass from Blake. That's never a good pass if your receiver doesn't catch it. <laughs> Cable along the baseline. First ticker had to fall right in his mitts and he lays it in. And that's one that North Carolina desperately needed. Now they've got to get a couple of stops defensively. It's just been too easy for Merrill. Blake looking down low to Baxter and he's got it. 
Cross court bounce pass to Juan Dixon again. This time it won't go and burst it for the rebound for Carolina. That was better defensive effort by North Carolina. They they allowed Wake Forest to shoot 77% from the field in the first half on Wednesday. And that's oh. a shot you're talking about, Dan. Adam Boone didn't even draw iron. Blake pulls up from 12. It won't fall. And Jawad Williams, a freshman out of Cleveland, Ohio. Boy, Matt Doherty is telling them, slow down. They do not want to get in a running up and down kind of affair with Maryland. You see Maryland with a decided rebounding advantage. One of the reasons is Maryland didn't miss any shots. <laughs> First sticker. Finish. I don't think it was blocked. I think he just missed it. I think he missed the dunk. You play against the University of Maryland. This is what you're looking at all night long. The Maryland Terrapins with their scrambling. They trap the inbounds pass. Look how difficult it is just to get the ball across half court. Then you get another trap as they pick up the dribble. And now here we get we get a wide open shot. They handled it very well, but they missed the opportunity, and that allows Maryland to get out and run. Coming into the game tonight, Carolina has only five more assists than turnovers for the year. Never has a Carolina team gone through a season with more turnovers than assists. That's just another one of those firsts that's a negative, Tom. When you hate to, to, to wear it out, I mean, because it is rough for everybody affiliated with this program. And, and Dan, you've been in this conference many years as Lang has a nice little jump hook. There are a lot of people that believe, even though it's fun to beat up on Carolina for this year because they've been beating everybody else up for so long. But it really does hurt the conference with Carolina being down, don't you think? I, I, there, I think there's no question at all about that. This conference is a much better conference top to bottom when North Carolina's good. Well, Baxter makes that one. See, just what I said. If he wants to shoot the ball from out there, let him shoot it from out there. My exactly. brilliance again. Yeah, exactly. It's shining. It's amazing. <laughs> We've worked together all of eight minutes. <laughs> Lang to the left hand. <laughs> Taj Holton got caught watching Baxter and Lang. He's got to pay attention to Juwan Williams. <laughs> Blake penetrates, floater in the lane, and rolls for Steve Blake. Again, Blake is looking to drive the ball to the basket, so he gives you that pump fake. I think, you know, you don't fight quite that hard. Melvin Scott, the freshman out of Baltimore Southern High School, has come on. There's Morris, and he needs it. Not there again. What a feed to Nicholas. He lays it in. Offensive foul, does the basket count? I think it does. I think they've called the basket good. Yes. North Carolina has struggled during the season passing the ball inside. This one is a very good entry pass. And Chris Lang just powers his way through. Holden takes a swing at the ball, still doesn't get it. You got to give a lot of credit to Lang. Pump fake, Morrison goes, and Blake just slides right by. Maryland leads. There is the world you know, and one you can only imagine. Where you can navigate satellites, or fly without ever leaving the ground. Where you can live in the future before it even arrives. When you cross into the blue, everything is different and important. Especially you. Everyone knows America Online makes it easy to keep in touch with loved ones, send instant messages to friends, get news, weather, and sports. But did you also know you can get WebMD, America's leading source of health information online? Keyword WebMD. My whole family got the flu and I got help on WebMD. WebMD is the health site that I trust the most. AOL has stuff you won't find anywhere else. WebMD, another great reason to sign up for AOL now. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Huh? Psst, down here. There's a new chunky soup. Mom? Huh? Don't fumble that bowl, baby. Whoa. <laughs> chunky chicken and dumplings is loaded with big chunks of chicken, veggies, and hearty homestyle dumplings to fill you up right. Hey, your head's on my shoulders. Your head. Your head's on my shoulder, man. 
dumplings. New Campbell's Chunky Homestyle Classics. Like Mom used to make. It's a new year, and not just any old trunk will do. So Chevy is kicking it into overdrive with $2,002 cash back on every new 2002 pickup truck. Like the dependable Chevy Silverado, now with more V8 horsepower and towing capacity than any half-ton 4x4 pickup. That's $2,002 cash back when you lease or purchase any new Chevy pickup. So drive into this year with a Chevy truck you can depend on. See your Valley Chevy dealer today. Welcome back to Chapel Hill, North Carolina for ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Don't forget on Thursday, we shift gears to the Pac-10 and a showdown indeed. Jason Gardner in 11th ranked Arizona. Battle Jason Capono in 15th ranked UCLA. Coverage begins at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific right here on Fox Sports Net. That'll be a good one from Pauley Pavilion. And that Pac-10 is really an interesting conference this year. Oregon lost this weekend. So that tightens things up out there. Stanford is the most defended beautifully by Nicholas. Nicholas is all alone. These Maryland guys can come at you from so many different directions with so many different weapons. Baxter has got 10 in the game. They've done a great job getting inside. They're now two of three from outside the three point arc. And this is the difference between a team having a great season and having a Maryland has hit the open shots. And the rebound comes away to Nicholas. Maryland looking now to a 14 point lead. Now Capel's going to be called for the foul. And Lonnie Baxter is the guy who we talked about before the game. He offensive rebound to start the game, scoring in transition inside. Then he hits the outside jump shot again. Great hands by Baxter and great strength to get the ball up to the goal. Will Contact rejected by Burst of tells you a great deal about Juan Dixon. He was a good six feet behind that play and tangled up with the guy and he sprints the length of the court. Doesn't get the block but doesn't get the foul forces the miss. That is just an outstanding play. That's why that kind of hustle that kind of attitude is why he is the player that he has become. Really it ought to be a, a very interesting vote Dan for Nora for Atlanta Coast Conference Player of the Year. I mean Jason Williams came in as the national preseason player of the year. But when you stack up the numbers uh, you can make a very strong argument that Dixon deserves the award rather than Williams. Well there's no question about that. Williams however has the advantage of position. There's a foul against Randall. Williams started with that moniker as the best player in the country. Here are the numbers that you're talking about. I think that what it's basically going to come down to is who's going to win the ACC title and uh, that may be what the deciding uh, factor is and of course these guys get together next Sunday uh, in College Park Dixon keep in mind that in the first the first time Duke and Maryland met Jason Williams had a big big game and Juan Dixon was limited to simply 10 points so that kind of thing factors mm -hmm. into a decision like that as well. And I'll tell you Jason what Williams has had some spectacular games in the biggest of games this year for Duke and to the credit of both Jason Williams and Juan Dixon I don't think either one of them could care less who wins an award like that as long as their teams are winning. First sticker missed both free throws tapped out of bounds by Lang. Incidentally Capel had to head to the North Carolina bench after picking up his second foul with a little more than 10 minutes to go here in the opening half and he leads the Tar Heels in every statistical category. And a man for North Carolina. Ryan Randall, the jump hook, and Williams a rebound <laughs> for the Tar Heels. What a great flat footed, one handed rebound. Dylan pulls up from 14, his first bucket of the game. You don't want to make a steady diet of shots like that, but. You have to be able to get open shots and in transition sometimes is your best opportunity. Nicholas will run the point with Blake having a seat for Maryland. That's what we were talking about with Maryland's rotation. 
Look, Jawad Williams has made a difference since he's come in the game. He got a block shot right there. People talk about North Carolina not improving as the season has gone on. Well, Jawad Williams has certainly shown a tremendous amount of improvement. Mouton the fadeaway, not there. Rebound to Randall, blocked from behind by Burstaker, but was there a foul? Yes, on Burstaker. Juan Dixon is a guy who works hard but lets the game come to him. And by that I mean he doesn't really try to force anything. Here he's got the ball. Boone is in pretty good defensive position. So Dixon gives it up and now he goes to another spot on the court. A lot of guys after working that hard to get it, particularly a big scorer, are just going to pull up and shoot the thing. Well, if you weren't with us from the opening of the game here tonight, our special guest analyst and special indeed, the great Walter Davis, his jersey number 24, hangs from the rafters right here at the Dean Dome. And well, Walter, I know Dwayne asked you about it earlier, but living out in Denver, what's this year been like for you, the Tar Heels year for you? Well, uh, a lot of my buddies, when I go to the health club to work out, they're all asking me questions, what's wrong with the Tar Heels? And like you said, I haven't been close to the action. This is the first game that I've been able to get to. So it's been tough for everybody, but I think the Heels will be back. Crowd wanted a foul there. Didn't get it. Nicholas for three. Misses everything, but the rebound comes away to Dixon. And Dixon got caught in the air. Carolina two on one. Scott goes coast to coast. That's the kind of play they need. Gary Williams is going to get a 30-second timeout. Maryland tends to get ragged from time to time, but that's what happens when you play the quick up and down tempo, and sometimes a timeout is what you need to calm them down. And Tom, while we're, we're talking about calming things down, Walter, I want to ask you a question. The, the Tar Heels have missed an awful lot of open shots here early in the game. Tell us what happens if you, if you, when you continue to miss those shots, do you get to be afraid to take them? Well, you can lose some of your confidence early if, you, if it's a shot that it's a good shot and you normally hit it. And that means if you don't use the 35-second uh, shot clock, that means you got to go back and play defense once again. And Maryland, like you said, is really pushing the pace. But for all that being said, for as well as I think Maryland has played, North Carolina is within 10, so they are within striking distance. They are also, as we get a look at the field goal shooting percentage, they're right on the edge of getting blown out of the stadium, and so they have got to make sure they get a couple of stops. Pitch and catch to Baxter. Jump hook, not there. Defended well by Capel, who's in the game with two fouls. He did a nice job preventing Baxter from getting closer to the basket. Will Johnson on for North Carolina. There's number 44, a non-recruited walk-on for the Tar Heels. Capel on the cut. Good head fake. Draws a foul. And Wilcox went down hard. I'm going to get the foul on the floor. Better come leave it on the floor. Well, he's in another galaxy when this guy leaves his feet. What happens is Wilcox gets picked off on the screen. And Wilcox at this point isn't a great one-on-one -on -one defender. What he likes to do is use his athletic ability to block shots. And you can see there, he just got faked out and fell across Jason Capel. And hopefully Chris Wilcox is just shaken up after that hard fall to the floor. So we're going to take a timeout with the injury to Wilcox. We'll let you know how he's doing when we return. You know how fast you were going? 65. 63. In this town. Isn't the speed limit 65? You don't mess with the law. Yeah, it is. I'm freaking out, man. Don't spit in that cop's burger. It'll like spit to you. Yeah. Burger pop! The law no. messes with you. Super Troopers. They're coming back, man. Pull over. He can't pull over any farther. Rated R starts Friday only in theaters. Come to Pep Boys for all of your car care needs. Buy an Energizer battery starting as low as $69.99. Get an Energizer battery at Pep Boys today and we'll guarantee it for 24 months and give you free jumpstart service for three years. Come to Pep Boys for an Energizer battery today. The 
Toyota 4Runner can take you places other vehicles can't. Which could necessitate bringing on some additional equipment. Call Domino's for a free order of oven fresh cinnamon sticks when you buy any large one topping pizza for $9.99. Sprinkled with cinnamon sugar and served with creamy icing, they're tough to resist. So call now, because at Domino's, we've got the dinner thing covered. Get the door, it's Domino's. Returns with the Subway 400, February 24th on Fox. Coming up at the half, we'll take a look back at this weekend's action from around the ACC and the remix. Plus, we'll hook you up with highlights from a day full of top 25 upsets. But right now, Tommy, let's get back out to you for an update on Chris Wilcox. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. Chris Wilcox able to get back up to his feet. Got a nice round of applause from the Carolina fans here at the Dean Dome. And he appears to be all right, sitting alongside Gary Williams on the Maryland bench. He really, really hit the ground hard, and it's good to see him able to get up and walk back to the bench. North Carolina, to this point in the game, only has two turnovers. Great penetration by Boone, and with a left hand, he lays it in over Holden. And Boone is not a guy who has the reputation as being a take the ball to the basket kind of player, but that's twice now that he's been able to do that. Dixon can't answer. Baxter the rebound. Foul by Capel. The bucket goes, and that's number three on Jason Capel. And the crowd upset, and quite honestly, they have reason to be. I'm not sure Capel ever moved. Baxter does a great job on the offensive boards, takes it. And I think they called the foul because he just slapped yeah. that hand down a little bit and didn't hit him hard, but did hit him on the elbow as he was shooting the ball. Let's check in with Dwayne Ballard. Tom, obviously Chris Wilcox hit the floor hard on that last collision. He hit his head, but he's fine. He's back in the coach's rotation. You'll notice where he's sitting on the bench. He's ready to go. Dan, so much for being durable and young, huh? <laughs> But Dwayne, if that was you fell down, you would uh, not be anywhere near the coach's rotation. And a whistle at the other end underneath against Lonnie Baxter. Listen to this collision a moment ago. And I mean to tell you, when Wilcox goes to block a shot, he gets up in the air, so he had a long way to go before he hit the ground. Dangerous pass there by Lang. It was deflected and nearly taken away by Juan Dixon. Boy, Dixon just relentless at the defensive end. Well, you just simply are very, very fortunate to get away with that kind of a pass when Juan Dixon is in the neighborhood. That's an entry pass you were talking about before the game. They had to get down to Lang, and he just couldn't finish with a jump hook. Maryland leads by 11, six and a half to play here in Chapel Hill, and a whistle away from the ball. It'll be against Jawad Williams, his first. Let's take a look here. Juan Dixon, all right, is right here. All right, and watch as Juan Dixon, they throw the ball, and Dixon's just sort of hanging around. Now he's coming. He sees the play. And he's just, it's, you got to be careful. Juan Dixon is just always in the passing lane. One and one from Mouton, and he hits the first to earn the second. Dixon's jersey number three matches his quest for a third consecutive first team All ACC selection, a third straight Maryland scoring title, and you see there, a third straight ACC steals crown. <laughs> Not too shabby. And he's going to go take a blow right now. And this is what we're talking about with Maryland's rotation. Nicholas came in a little while ago for. Blake and now Dixon goes out and so Nicholas comes in is, takes uh, Dixon's place so they just have a real nice rotation one they've got three guys that play in the backcourt sort of interchangeable first sticker throws it away but saved by Wright. Carolina will get it back 
Shot clock at 10. Williams hangs in the air. Burstiger able to lay it in. Good effort there by Burstiger. He's given him some good minutes here tonight. Working very, very hard. North Carolina has taken a couple of opportunities in the second chance to convert. Break right there for Blake in Maryland. Now seven assists for Blake, and you're right, he got caught in the air. It was very, very fortunate they didn't lose that ball on the tournament. Do you get an assist to yourself on a play like that? <laughs> Morrison turns it over. Blake takes it down. Now watch as he gets up in the air. Boy, he's really undecided. The ball gets slapped right back to him. Blake with seven assists, six assists, pardon me, in the ball game. What a game he had in the first meeting between these two teams. 12 points, 14 assists, a career high, and nine rebounds. One rebound shy of a triple-double. Lang went for the head fake on Baxter, but he couldn't make him pay for it. And Mouton's going to pick up a foul. North Carolina working very hard on the boards. Gary Williams thinks that was a foul in there for moving underneath Baxter. But North Carolina really does a nice job defending this particular play. They don't let Dixon get to the basket. They force him to throw the ball back outside. They cover Blake. They don't let him drive to the basket. And this is a nice job by Juwan Williams to prevent Baxter from getting close. Great job to cut down on the penetration, but there's an illegal strength. So they'll walk to the other end. Morrison picks up the foul, and unfortunately, that puts Maryland on the line. And you were making the point that Lonnie Baxter shoots the ball poorly from the free throw line, but this is a Maryland team that shot like 53% from the line in November. But since December, Maryland has been 73% from the line, and they're even a little bit better than that in ACC games. Of course, they had the great game against Virginia when they hit on 25 out of 26 to beat the Wahoos in Charlottesville. You're out, Mama. That would have been a big win for the Cavaliers. And that was, that was something that Virginia, they beat Clemson today, and that was a win they desperately needed. But that Maryland loss where they were ahead by nine points with just a couple of minutes to go, that can be one of those devastating things that turns the season around in the wrong direction. Nicholas hits on one of two. The Maryland lead is 14. And nearly a turnover. And then shoved out of bounds is manual by Baxter. And now that's Lonnie Baxter's second foul with just under five minutes to play here in the half. Certainly no quit in North Carolina. That is a very difficult pass to execute, but Williams dives on the court, barely saves the ball, and then Manuel's got it, and Baxter gives him one of those roll blocks. You can probably get away with that on a football field, but on a basketball court right in front of the referee, don't have much success very often. New. Jawad Williams, the freshman, as we mentioned, out of Cleveland, Ohio, went to St. Edwards High School. And the inbounds pass thrown away. That's exactly what Gary Williams was telling his team today. We can steal that inbounds pass. It's not the way he had in mind, though. Wilcox just knocked it down right out of Melendez's hands. He threw the ball right into Wilcox's hands. What a catch! Well, you don't see him miss very many like that. Wilcox just came back into the game after being injured a few minutes ago. Good to see he's all right. Melendez picked up his dribble in the corner. Was able to get it away to Williams. Good head fake. And he can't get the roll, but Williams will go to the line. Starting to talk about Williams when he was a freshman at St. Edwards High. How about this team? Sam Clancy, the star at Southern Cal, and I think a lot of folks in the ACC got a taste of Steve Logan from Cincinnati yesterday. Logan electrifying in that Bearcats win at Wake Forest. He tossed in 30 for Cincinnati. Knock him down, Watt. You know, speaking of that same high school, Steve Lapore from Wake Forest also went to St. Edwards High in Cleveland. That's a pretty good team right there, Dan. <laughs> That's a pretty good team. You're absolutely right. 
And uh, you know, a guy who makes a living evaluating players, I'd be interested to know, Walter, what what what, what do you think of Juwad Williams? I think Juwad Williams. I, I, when I go and look at a player, I'm looking at his foot quickness and then fundamentals, and I'm impressed with them so far. Williams missing the two free throws there. Carolina, in fact, 0 for 4 from the foul line. A situation where North Carolina certainly has stayed in this game defensively, but they've had a tough time converting some open opportunities on the offensive end. Battle for the rebound. Mouton and Johnson, and Will Johnson going to be flagged for the call. Mouton just overpowered Johnson inside. Johnson, a guy who you mentioned is a walk-on at North Carolina. He's just overpowered here. Mouton does a great job forcing Johnson under the basket without fouling him. And then Johnson wraps his arms all the way around. Again, that's okay, but you have to have a little bit of distance between you and the referee when you do that. Not, of course, that I would have any personal experience with that. It's just something I've I heard. Understand. Walter Davis, our special guest analyst here tonight. Walter, you mentioned the last time a North Carolina team failed to make the NCAA tournament 27 years ago. You were a freshman on that team. I want to ask you about what might be going through the minds of some of this Tar Heel team this year in a moment. It's tough not having a car. With immediate claim service, GEICO gets you back on the road fast. GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Arizona DUI law just got tougher. Under new DUI laws, you can be arrested for driving with an alcohol level of .08 and extreme DUI of .15. Blumberg & Associates is ready to represent you. You may lose your license, spend time in jail, and face heavy fines. Call our trial team today for a free consultation. My firm is ready to fight for you. So if you're arrested for any reason, call Blumberg & Associates at 264-1900. Every Sunday, before they start their engines, it's NASCAR this morning. Fasten your seatbelt. Oh, look at them go. Doesn't get any better than this. It's the show that takes you inside the world of NASCAR for all the breaking stories on or off the track. That is absolutely outstanding. It's almost frightening. Don't miss the best pre-race party this side of Talladega. It's absolutely wild. NASCAR this morning, Sundays at 8 on Fox Sports Net. In their last showdown, Luke Walton led Arizona to a thrilling comeback. Now, Jason Capono and UCLA are hungry for redemption. Thursday at 8.30. Here we go. Jack will make the long front court pass. Gets it to Walter Davis. Two, one, Walter takes the shot. It goes! It truly was unbelievable. I'll never forget that game, and I know a lot of folks in this part of the country will never forget it. Carolina was down eight points with 17 seconds left. Bear in mind, folks, there was no three-point line in college basketball then. Walter, you have to be asked that a thousand times every year when you come in this part of the country. Well, I'm surprised it was in color. I thought it was still <laughs> black and white. But uh, I am asked about it, and uh, it was a lucky shot. I never used the backboard. It went in off the backboard. I used to try to go for switches. That sent the game, by the way, to overtime. Carolina won that game in overtime. Oh, wow. What a, a violent foul there by Taj Holden. He clotheslined Jawad Williams going up to the hoop. And Jawad Williams is feeling this. This is a nice job by Chris Lang to find the opening. And clothesline is exactly the correct description there. He just got nailed. Now, Holden is immediately trying to help him up. Holden was swinging at the ball and missed. He was not trying to take Williams' head off, but he swung at the ball and missed. And unfortunately for Gerard Williams, his head was the next thing in the path of the arm of Taj Holden. 
Williams 0 for 3 from the free throw line. And look at North Carolina 0 for 5 overall. This is what we're talking about. You have open opportunities in a game like this. You've got to convert them. Williams hits one of two. The Tar Heels trail by 14 with 3.30 to play here in the opening hand. Holding stepped out of bounds. Just tremendous effort by North Carolina on defense. Duad Williams did a very nice job forcing Holden away from the basket and then as Jackie Mann will dive in after the ball, forcing Holden to step out of bounds. Boone goes right by Blake, pitches it out to Manuel, but he'll pass up the three defended by Dixon. A great pressure by Blake. It's awfully difficult to look inside when you have somebody right in your face. Carolina turns it over. Ryan Randall jump hook in the lane, won't fall. Mouton again out muscles Johnson for the rebound. And then a collision and a foul on Jackie Emanuel. Starting to ask Walter Davis a moment ago, the last North Carolina team that failed to make an NCAA tournament was 27 years ago. Walter, you were a freshman on that team and obviously had not been around very long. Is there any way to describe what it must be like for the seniors on this North Carolina team to know that more than likely they're not going to an NCAA tournament? Well, I, I would imagine that it would be pretty bad after uh, uh, being in the NCAAs the previous three years and then going out on a sour note like that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. I'm sure the guys are, are very unhappy about that situation. I mean, some of the numbers are mind boggling. 27 consecutive trips to the NCAA tournament. 31 consecutive 20 win seasons. That's an all time NCAA record. 15 Final Fours, an NCAA record. And the second most wins all time, second only to Kentucky in the history of college basketball. Williams, and he'll go to the line. That is a nice job. We're talking about entering the ball into the post. That was a good pass inside, and Williams was a nice catch. Didn't hesitate, carried it up to the basket, and because he kept his motion going towards the basket, he's going to get the foul. So the ball goes in, watch him catch and go right to the goal. If he stops, then it's a non-shooting foul. But that way, he keeps going, gets the conversion, and now gets a three-point play. And that brings North Carolina back to sort of within striking distance again. A critical final 220 and a half for Carolina. Make things very interesting with a stop or two and a three-point cut. Last touch, I believe, by Adam Boone. Maryland will get it back with a fresh 35. Really impressed with how hard Maryland continues to work on the offensive end. North Carolina's hard defensively, and Maryland has been patient, and they have worked hard. They've gotten good shot opportunities, and they've gotten a number of offensive rebounds because they're working so hard. Blake nearly had it taken away, and then there's Nicholas for an open three. Wow. And keep in mind, that is after an offensive rebound. Some good work with under heavy pressure, and you just eventually, you handle the ball well, you're going to get that open shot. Nine points off the bench for Drew Nicholas. Manuel had it stripped away, and now Maryland with a 16-point lead and a minute 30 to play until halftime. Jerry, Seventh turnover for the Tar Heels. Pardon me, Dan. Gary Williams wants him to slow down and actually run a play on this series. Well, I'll tell you what, if you could get that shot every time down the court, Gary Williams would take yeah. it. Juan Dixon's not going to miss that very often. Randall came over the back of the lane. lane. That'll be the 10th team foul against Maryland, so Lang will go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. And one of the guys who has to be the most frustrated for North Carolina is this guy right here, Chris Lang. He works very hard to get position down on the inside. And if you're a big guy working for position, you're open for a split second. 
And if you don't get the ball in that split second when you're open, then either it becomes a turnover or you have a very, very difficult play to try to make, or the guy covers you up and you don't get the ball at all. And so with inexperienced guards, it's awfully frustrating for a big guy who works as hard as Lang works to get open inside. Lang in a boat. One minute to play until halftime. Blake posts up Morrison. Tough fade away. I mean, that's their point guard going inside and making a turnaround jumper on the baseline. How are you supposed to defend that? I don't think he can, can you? Well, some teams may be able to defend it, but North Carolina, they're working so hard to cut off those inside guys, and then Blake goes down, and that was not an easy shot. I mean, he was relatively open, but it was a catch and a turn and a fade. This is a very good Maryland team. Is it ever, and they continue to get better and better as the season goes on. And that's the one thing if you're Gary Williams, you have to be very excited about. If you can stay healthy, and obviously that's a key knock on with the Terrapins can. And you have guys like Randall, who are, their improvement has been marked during this entire season. Randall's become a valuable part of the rotation. Nicholas, another guy. And just threw that one up. They had nine seconds left on the what shot. Pass. Dixon at the other end. And that's three for Juan Dixon. And that's that's a dagger in the heart. You talked about it being an important stretch for North Carolina, while Maryland has really stretched it out. It was 13, and Maryland's now got it to 19. Morrison pitches it off to Boone. He'll pull up and a double clutch and knocks in the jumper. And that's the way the first half will end. Carolina hung around for the better part of 16 minutes. But over the final four minutes of the half, Gary Williams' team warmed up to the tune of a 17-point lead. Maryland 47, North Carolina 30. That's the end of the opening half. Let's check in along the sideline with Dwayne Ballard. Coach Williams, what were your impressions of that first half? Well, I thought we did a pretty good job. Uh, we're a little rusty. We're not executing really well in the half court. But we've made a lot of good plays to make up for it. Hopefully, we continue to do it the second half. Very physical first half. Yeah, well, you know, there are two good basketball teams, and there's a lot of big people out there, and the court's not getting any bigger, so it just seems to get more physical. What are the things you'll remind your team of when you get in the locker room? Just so we have a 17-point lead, and we should uh, play with composure and make sure we're getting good shots every time down court. Thank you, Coach Gary Williams. Maryland, Tom. Thank you, Coach Williams. Thank you, Dwayne Ballin. Well, right now, let's join Kevin Frazier in our Los Angeles studio for the ACC Sunday Night Hoops Halftime Report. Tommy, thanks a lot. Gary Williams sweating like he played in the first half. Halftime in the Dean Dome. Big lead for the Terps. On the way, we'll update the day in the ACC. We'll also show you highlights from an upsetting day in the top 25. Maryland leads North Carolina 47-30 at the break. Compact Presario 5000 TPC has something for everyone. For film buffs, a free DVD drive. Or for music buffs, a free CDRW drive. For technology buffs, an Intel Pentium 4 processor with power to burn. And burn and burn. Yep, it's a buff PC, all right. And it's just $7.99 after a $50 instant rebate. So, financial buffs, call 1-800-332-1878 to buy now and get a free DVD or CDRW drive. Well, Pa, I guess a lot of people would say we lead a dull life. That's what they say, Prudence, because they haven't seen our ride from Camelback Volkswagen. Well, our gothic couple would be tempted by the great financing and lease deals right now on all the new 2002 gas-saving models at Camelback Volkswagen. Tradition doesn't have to be old-fashioned. You got that right, Pa. Yeah. They love Camelback Volkswagen, and so will you. Stop by and see for yourself the great deals on great cars. 15th Street and Camelback, where you make the choice and we make it easy.
Just another new year? Not this one, because Chevy's in overdrive with $2,002 cash back plus low APR on every new SUV. From the power of Trailblazer to the 2002 Motor Trend Truck of the Year Chevy Avalanche, you get $2,002 cash back plus low APR on any new SUV. So don't make this the same old new year. See your Valley Chevy dealer today. I was raised in the ACC. Yeah, yeah. Halftime shows on the college course. Williams, yeah. dribble yeah. penetration. Shot blocked on Wayne to try to stop it. My man Warren G with the beats, and lately for Duke, it's been Carlos Boozer who's provided the Blue Devils with the baskets. Boozer has stepped up for Coach K's team, and for that reason, the junior has recently been named one of the team's tri-captains, joining Mike Dunleavy Jr. and Jason Williams, the Blue Devils leader. We begin the ACC remix with the new captain and his teammates Saturday, taking on Georgia Tech, and who else down low for Carlos Boozer for the bucket? He had 11 points and 7 rebounds, and you know what? Jason Williams is fantastic, but so is Mike Dunleavy Jr. This kid making a bid for ACC Player of the Year. He had 23 points. Duke cruises by Georgia Tech. Saturday, a non-conference matchup for Wake Forest. Taking on Cincinnati, Darius and Gaia inside for the bucket. But if you don't know about Steve Logan, let me hit you to the cause. Logan drops 30. The Bearcats improved to 22-2 with the win. Earlier today, Virginia snapped its four-game skid. Keith Jennifer, he's young, but he's ready. Virginia improves to 5-5 five and five in ACC play with the win. And then one other game from this afternoon, North Carolina State and Florida State. And Anthony Grundy, the main man for Herb Sendek's team, he had 25 in a, the Wolfpack complete the season sweep over Florida State with the victory. Now here's a look at the current ACC standings. The Terps need to hold on today to keep pace with Duke. Just remember, Wake, Maryland, and Duke all face each other in the coming weeks. Speaking of Wake Forest, next week in a key conference matchup, Skip Prosser and the Demon Deacons face his former boss, Pete Gillen and the Virginia Cavaliers, right here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. You know, it was a wild day outside the ACC as several top 25 teams took a tumble. Highlights from those games are coming up next. It's halftime in Chapel Hill. Juan Dixon, the reigning ACC Player of the Week, doing his thing. So are the Turks. They lead 47 to 30. Her scent led me into the desert. I can't believe this is really happening. She can't resist my touch. I love you. Together we dance alone in the wilderness. Yes. I am a glorious man.
Dear Kurt, how is training camp? Are you getting along with the other boys? This new chunky soup will fill you up right after a fun-filled day. No, no, no! New chunky beef rib roast with potatoes is loaded with lean chunks of savory rib roast for a taste of home while you're away. Lights out! I miss you, Pumpkin. Love, Mom. <laughs> you all right, Kurt? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. New Campbell's Chunky Homestyle Classics. Like Mom used to make. This March, FX brings you television's most intense cop thriller. To the police! The Shield, coming in March to FX. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Staples. Yeah, we've got that. By Toyota. Get a great lease or low financing on any 2002 Toyota. See your Toyota dealer today. And by Nike. Enjoy the weather. Fresno State's Melvin Eli, one of the top 30 players still in the hunt for the John R. Wooden Award. The senior and the Bulldogs hosting number 14 Oklahoma State this afternoon. Tar taking on Eddie Sutton, but mainly it was Melvin Eli and Chris Sandy going to work. Here's Eli. He lodged a double-double. Bulldogs upset Oklahoma State, 58-52. Number 12, Miami and Boston College. And off the steal, Ryan Sidney. The oops upside your head to Kenny Walls. Al Skinner and crew beat Miami for the second time in two weeks. Number 16, Ohio State continues to tumble in the Big Ten. Tom to the Izzo's team with the upset, 67-64, the final there. Pittsburgh and number 23, Syracuse in the Big East. Preston Shumpert, it's crazy, it's good. He had 28 points, but hold on, dog. Brandon Knight with the bucket. Pitt gets the upset 75 to 63. This number 23 Syracuse is knocked off. You know, this is a big week as far as the top 25 is concerned. The Terps get another crack at Duke on Sunday. Then there's Bedlam in the Big 12, and Tubby takes on his former team. And let's not forget about a pair of games that you can catch right here on the net. Ludolph's and surprising Wildcats roll into Westwood to take on the Bruins in what is basically a must-win game for UCLA if they hope to stay in the conference race. Game time, 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right here on the net. That game, of course, is Thursday, but up next we're headed back to Carolina. It's halftime in Chapel Hill with Lonnie Baxter leading the way. He has 13 points. Maryland with a 17-point cushion. 47-30 to 30 is your score. We're headed back to the Dean Dome in a moment. How sweet it is to play at the river all month. Or you could win cash up to $2,500, a tropical cruise for two to Hawaii, a one-carat diamond ring, or an eight-hour limousine package with $1,000 to spend. Just fill out a free entry form, and you'll soon see just how sweet it is to play at the river. Go to the river, the river, she knows. Jack? Yeah. Satan on line three. Hello. You're mine, Bob. You wish. I caught you in a lie. We don't make it till you order it. Please. It's true. My burgers and sandwiches are served hot and fresh because we don't make it till you order it. Honest. Really? Sorry. My bad. You have a need courtside seats. Let me know. It's the start of another year, and Chevy wants to make it one to remember. That's why we're kicking it into overdrive with $2,002 cash back on every new 2001 and 2002 Chevy car, truck, and SUV. That's $2,002 when you lease or purchase any new Chevrolet. It's a new year, and a new Chevy could make all the difference. So see your Valley Chevy dealer today. Hi, I'm Rick from Empire Glass. Let Empire Glass replace your cracked windshield and we'll still pay up to $100 of your comprehensive insurance deductible. And we'll now give you 24 free dinners to any El Paso Barbecue Company restaurant, over a $300 value with any windshield replacement. And we'll even give you a free 14 karat diamond pendant necklace. So for up to $100 off your deductible and 24 free dinners to the El Paso Barbecue Company, call Empire Glass today at 602-952-9339. When you think glass, think Empire. How far can you go with a degree from University of Phoenix? Our graduates are GMs, VPs, and CEOs at major corporations. Many own their own business. Attend classes at times that fit your busy schedule. At University of Phoenix, you can earn your bachelor's or master's degree in just two to three years, so you can quickly apply it to your career success. How far do you want to go? University of Phoenix, 480-557-2000. 
watching Fox Sports Net. Number three, Maryland leads at halftime here at the Dean Smith Center, 47-30. Well, get ready for another big week of basketball in the Atlantic Coast Conference. It begins on Thursday. North Carolina State, the Wolfpack picking up its 18th win of the season today, will travel to Cameron Indoor Stadium to take on number one Duke. And then a week from today, the rematch everyone's been waiting for. Jason Williams and number one Duke go to Cole Fieldhouse in College Park to take on number three Maryland with first place on the line in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Get a look at some of the other games coming up this week. Next Sunday night, we'll have for you Virginia at Wake Forest. Our first look on ACC Sunday Night Hoops at Skip Rosser's Demon Deacon. The Compact Rosario 5000 TPC has something for everyone. For film buffs, a free DVD drive. Or for music buffs, a free CDRW drive. For technology buffs, an Intel Pentium 4 processor with power to burn. And burn and burn. Yep, it's a buff PC, all right, and it's just $7.99 after a $50 instant rebate. So, financial buffs, call 1-800-332-1878 to buy now and get a free DVD or CDRW drive. Brown makes me feel powerful. Brown lets me be everywhere all at once. Brown software connects me to my suppliers, connects me to my customers. Brown brings me my raw materials. Brown delivers my finished goods. I trust Brown. Other colors may be cute, but they don't call you back. Making business more efficient. What can Brown do for you? Pep Boys has cut prices on hundreds of items throughout the store, like these hands-free wireless phone kits. They were $59.99, now just $39.88. Or four-pack wheel covers, now only $28.88. Look for this sign and save at Pep Boys. A year ago, I'm bumming. I'm seeing hair here and hair there, so I started using Rogaine. Simple, safe, clinically proven to regrow hair. Look, nothing here, nothing here. It's all here. Rogaine, stronger than heredity. Arizona Sports Report. Thank you, thank you, thank you! It's the nightly newscast you've been waiting for. This is the real deal. 30 minutes every night dedicated to scores, highlights, and interviews from your hometown teams. We told you it was going to be good. Your teams, your town, your show. The Arizona Sports Report, nightly at 10 on Fox Sports Net. ACC Sunday Night Hoops is brought to you by Staples. Yeah, we've got that. And by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Along with Dan Bonner, our special guest, Walter Davis. And yes, that little fella. Welcome back to the Dean Smith Center. In Chapel Hill, North Carolina, I'm Tom Brenneman. 47-30, Maryland leads the Tar Heels at halftime. And Jawad Williams starts the second half. He had a very fine first half, six points and six rebounds in 15 minutes of action. Jason Capel, a quiet first half. He had three fouls and had to sit the bench. There's Williams. Bingo. That's a nice job by Williams. He throws the ball into Chris Lang and then drifts a little further out in the corner. And Chris Wilcox turns and looks at Chris Lang. Williams is open and knocks it down. Wad Williams continues to improve more and more as this season goes on. There's Baxter, not going to go, and Wilcox able to come over the top and get the rebound. A little jump up will go down for Chris Wilcox. That was a tremendous offensive rebound. He jumped straight up in the air, tipped the ball so he could recover it. Man, I know you heard about it. You've been associated with the Atlantic Coast Conference for the better part of 25 years. But remember after three games, everybody was saying, what's the problem with Jawad Williams? Was averaging three points a game his first three games into college as Lang hits a jump hook. Well, shooting about 
But since then, he's averaging a little better at 10 per game and shooting 50%. He's going to be a good player. I think he's going to be a fine player. One of the reasons, as Dixon misses that one, that people are complaining about Jawad Williams. Here he is, a highly talented recruit. And the Tar Heels were 0-3, having lost at home. Dixon for three. Not there. And Lang had good position, but Baxter able to get the rebound. And Boone deflects it out of bounds. While we have a moment, let's take a look at our pet boys. First half statistics. And I think one of the things that you have to be impressed with is that number right there. North Carolina with only seven turnovers. However, they defeated that with this number right there, 39% shooting, and they had some open looks that they didn't make. A lot of that shooting, a lot of those shooting woes you have to associate with the Maryland defense, but you have to say that Carolina had some openings they didn't make. Paper strips it away from Wilcox and throws it away. Capel forcing the pass to Jawad Williams in a Carolina turnover. And you don't need to force the play. This is what we were talking about. Matt Doherty knows his team is trying to sometimes be just a little bit too fine. That would have been a perfect pass. You don't need the perfect pass. Make the easy pass. So the last meeting between these two teams, when Maryland won 112 to 79, Carolina turned it over 25 times. Dixon on the offensive rebound and the putback. Dixon is a guy that you have to guard in every spot on the floor. Juan Dixon has now scored in double figures in 40 consecutive games. Nice left hand hook right there from Lang in the paint. The second bucket in the second half. Lang gets the ball that close and you give him that much time with the ball. He's usually going to score. Crowd trying to get behind the Tar Heels. The trail by 14. Brown wanted a walk on Dixon. He is so explosive. Adam Boone has really got a tough assignment. You get out, you guard that three, and then he goes right around you. They just continue to dump it in the lane. And the tip won't go by Williams. Got it back strong up to the basket and good for Jawad Williams. Williams does a nice job recognizing that Chris Wilcox as a shot blocker is going to go looking for block shots. And when your guy goes to block a shot, get yourself in position for the rebound. Missed by Blake. Carolina with a chance to trim this 14-point lead to 11. Knocked out of bounds by Wilcox off the three-point miss from Caper. Talk about the things that Juan Dixon can do. You defend that three, and Boone is simply not quick enough. That's great strength to split the defense. We talk about having to guard him on every spot on the floor. Well, here, Adam Boone just gets himself pushed underneath the basket. Juan Dixon, a fine rebounder. He gets the ball that close, and nobody around him. He's going to score. Lang and Boone head of the Carolina benches. First sticker and Morrison coming. Good head fake by Williams and hits a 15-foot. What an impressive game for the freshman, Jawad Williams. He has 13. And the crowd is suddenly alive. And now they're quiet. And now they sit down. There's nothing that kills a rally and kills a home crowd like the opposition three. Now you just got to keep battling if you're North Carolina. I keep giving it to 21. <laughs> I mean, the way things are going in your season, give him the ball. And he's got it right now going to work. Look at it. Matt Doherty screaming for contact. And Williams just now heading to the other end of the floor. Good ball moving into Baxter. And if that's on Capel, it's number four, and it is. Matt Doherty really upset Dan and Williams driving the basket at the other end and no ball. It's been that kind of year. for everyone.
my hands speak to me. They tell me secrets. They tell me of time and patience. At least, that is what my hands say. The all-new Lexus ES300. A new world of luxury. Call Domino's for a free order of oven fresh cinna sticks when you buy any large one topping pizza for $9.99. Sprinkled with cinnamon sugar and served with creamy icing, they're tough to resist. So call now, because at Domino's, we've got the dinner thing covered. Get the door, it's Domino's. For my messengers, it's RB and hip hop. Hip hop you can get anywhere. But RB, I mean old school RB, it's only on vinyl. So maybe once a week I go home, throw down a few tracks from the old LP. Vinyl. Put it on CD. Mm -hmm. It's all about keeping the right vibe. There's only one way to burn with the best-selling CD burning software in the world. Easy CD Creator 5 from Roxio. I just think he is a uh, kid who goes out there and, and we talk a lot about sportsmanship. I never heard him talk trash in a game. Uh, but yet he kills you. Uh, he's a smart, smart, smart player who can really shoot, uh, really defend, um, doesn't hunt his shot, just gets it in the flow of their offense. He plays both ends of the court, and that, that's what separates Juan from a lot of players, that he's willing to give as much defensively as he does offensively. And when you're a high scorer, I think there's a tendency to maybe save yourself a little bit, but Juan doesn't do that in his case. He just goes all out for as long as he can. And this kid, really, a guy who comes into Maryland and a skinny kid, everybody wondered what was wrong with Gary Williams signing this guy. And Juan Dixon has had a great, great career as a therapist. wonder how many times Gary Williams has asked what the heck he's doing now about recruiting Juan Dixon. <laughs> Juan Dixon truly will go down as one of the all-time great players in Maryland history. Dan, you've been around this conference for a long time. Is it a stretch to wonder if he is the best player air ever at Merrill? I don't think that's a stretch. You know, when you get to the rarefied air that he's finding, he's got a shot at being the all-time leading scorer at Maryland. And there's a foul on the inside. That's against Burstaker, I believe. But he's got a chance to be the all-time leading scorer at Maryland. He's got a chance to be the all-time leader in steals at Maryland. He's got a chance to be the all-time leader in steals in the ACC. This is a kid who has had a tremendous career. now. You think about the players that they've had at Merrill and Fox Sunday Night Hoops is going to go to the last game at Cole Fieldhouse and a lot of those guys will be there but uh, one who won't is the late Len Bias who was certainly a wonderful player. You've got guys like Len Elmore and Tom McMillan and John Lucas so I, he ranks right up there with him. Walter Davis our special guest tonight. Walter who is the best Maryland player that you played against during your career in North Carolina. I, I would have to say John Lucas. Um, he could do so much out there, uh, kill you with the pass, and he could score too. And he was a good team leader. Well, those were some battles, weren't they, Walter? They you guys were. had with Maryland? They were. Maryland, some of those teams with Lenny Elmore and Tom McMillan. Mo Howard, right? Absolutely. That group. And those teams never went to an NCAA tournament. Harrison buries the three. Fifty-eight. 44, Maryland in front, under 15 minutes to play here in Chapel Hill. Good defense, leading the pass to the interior by Lang. Williams, good head fake. And then got hung in the air and threw it away. And Blake, the bounce pass to Mouton, who lays it in and he'll go to the line. Chris Lang does a great job on the inside. When you talk about overplay, what you're talking about is here is Chris Lang right here, and as the ball goes to this side, he is going to get up on the top. Look at that. He's over all the way around, does a great job coming around Lonnie Baxter. Lots of times a big guy will push his way through, but Lang went around him, so it was good foot speed, something that you don't often associate with Chris Lang. Mouton along with Nicholas, such versatile performers as Nicholas will take over for Mouton. Nicholas, they can ask him to play the one, they can ask him to play the two or the three. Walter Davis was very much like that during his days at North Carolina. Not 
not much at the number one spot as a five second violation as whistled against the Tar Heels. But Walter, how difficult is that as a player to learn maybe a number two and a three spot on the on the club? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of different things. In the three position, you don't have to worry about waiting for the ball when they take it out of bounds. You can run up and down the court, use your speed and quickness. But the two, you really got, if they overplay the one, you got to be there to get the ball in bounds. Gary Williams of late has gone to this lineup where he's used Blake, Nicholas, and Dixon at the same time on the floor. Really gives him a quickness, and you can put a lot of pressure. Nice feed into Lang. He gets a lay in. Lang really battling here in the second half. His third basket. Showed you Chris Lang on the defensive end. We'll look at Chris Lang on the offensive end. That is a great job getting position. That's what we're talking about. You saw he was open for a split second, got the ball when he was open, and got the ball at the optimum time that he can make a move to the basket. That was a good entry pass. But that kid is working very, very hard. Carolina has hit on 7 of 11 here in the second hand. If the Tar Heels trail by 15. Hold into the basket and rejected by Jawan Wood. Gary Williams thought that was Bolton. And Mike Wood is telling him that ball was going up. And I'll tell you what, Jawan Williams, as he blocks this shot, he's going to bat the ball up in the air. He takes it and he bats it further up in the air. That's a very, very difficult call. Whatever it was, it was awfully close. And remember, Mike Wood didn't have the advantage of a slow motion instant replay. Dixon for three. Wow, what a big shot for Juan Dixon. 15 in the game for the senior out of Calvert Hall High School in Baltimore. on Holden. He can beat him off the dribble all night long. There is no question that he's got an advantage in quickness against Holden. And Maryland, if this were a closer game, they would probably run somebody at him, force him to give up the ball. What a feed from Blake to Ryan Randall. Blake so steady at the point guard. And one of the reasons this Maryland team is playing so effectively is they've got a bunch of guys who really understand their roles. And Steve Blake probably personifies that. Just is really doing a very good job knowing when to pass and when to shoot and when to dribble. And that's a whole lot of the battle when you're playing offense. Scott, tough shot. Oh, did you see Dixon tip that ball away? That was an unbelievable play by Juan Dixon. That was an unbelievable play by Juan Dixon. That's not going to show up in any stat anywhere. The shot goes up, and Juan Dixon's going to be on the left of your screen. Is going to jump from behind, just tip the ball back. That is some play by Dixon. Now, of course, Steve Blake, one of the best passers oh. in the country, and that's just dynamite. I don't even know how he could see that guy open. Screen and roll for Maryland. Randall's wide open on the inside, but Dixon is wide open on the perimeter, and he nails it. And if you're not going to handle that screen and roll, one of those two guys has to be covered. That way, both the, well, that time, both guys roll. Dixon again. This time, can't get it to fall. Jawad Williams has taken a seat for the heels. He has 15 to lead the way for North Carolina. And a reach-in foul against Drew Nichols. That's the first foul of the second half whistled against the Terrapins. A nice feed into Scott from Boone. Well, you don't often see Juan Dixon fooled like that. Dixon was waiting for that pass that he knew was coming, but Scott went back door. Dixon got caught flat-footed. Holden working on Capo, rejected by Lang. Three on two for Carolina, Boone for three. And chip the glass. Brown wanted to travel on Holden, didn't get it. Here comes Blake. 
pitches outside to Dixon. How about that? Right, the tale of two seasons, if you will. Boone comes down and maybe he doesn't need to rush that much, but he's got a wide open three, doesn't get it, and then Juan Dixon gets the rim, bounces up, and goes in. Foul underneath against Holden as Lang went up to the basket. Well, Tom, I said a little bit earlier, we were talking about those great Maryland teams, and I said they didn't go to an NCAA tournament. Of course, they did. What I was trying to say was that they never won an ACC mm -hmm. tournament championship, and that's something that this group of Maryland Terrapins has never done. The Maryland team in 72-73 got the ACC bid in the NCAA tournament because North Carolina State, which won the tournament, was on probation that year. And then in 74-75, uh, John Lucas, the senior year, Maryland went to the NCAA tournament because that was the first time that you could have more than one representative from a conference. But they never won an ACC tournament championship, and neither has this group, and it's another real good group of Terrapins. Let's check in courtside with Dwayne Ballard. Tom, Chris Lang, as we know, has had a number of injuries since he's been at Carolina. Listen to this. Virus is a couple of times, shin splints, a sprained knee twice, sprained ankle, a pulled chest muscle, which they thought he had a heart attack during. He had to leave two games because of stomach viruses, another sprained knee, and another stomach virus. This is all one guy. Mash unit should have been following him around. <laughs> Closing in on 1,300 career points here at Carolina as a four-year start. Wilcox throws one down at the other end, and Maryland has its largest lead at 20. Wilcox wanted to throw it down again, and if that's capable, he's fouled out of the game. On Capel, he needs, he doesn't want to be doing stuff like that with this emphasis in the ACC on showing sportsmanship. You don't, sportsmanship, you don't want to show up to referees by a display. And he's very upset by it. And this, a great pass by Juan Dixon causes him to foul out of the game. And he, he just, again, he sticks his hand in there. If he just keeps his hands up, he doesn't get the foul. Now, this is the previous trip, and you got a guy like Chris Wilcox, and it's really comfortable to be able to throw the ball up in the air, and you know he's going to go get it. Referees do not call fouls. Referees call what look to them like fouls. And when you're right underneath the basket, you're looking right at the play, and you see the guy drop his arm and reach in, that's almost always going to be a foul. So Jason Capel... Yeah, he may not have hit him very hard, but he reached that hand in there, and because he reached it in there, it looks like a foul of the officials. They blow a whistle and call the foul. Capel finishes with five points and two rebounds before fouling out. Bear in mind, his career high is 27 points. He's done it twice, both times against Maryland, including the first meeting this year. One of the problems he has had tonight, of course, has been foul trouble the entire game. He got two fouls very early, then picked up his third foul still in the first half. It has been a very frustrating evening for him. But I'll tell you what, it's an indication of how difficult it is to guard Chris Wilcox. And I think a lot of people around the country, they tend to zero in on Duke, and you can understand why. I mean, they're the defending national champion. They're ranked number one to start the year. Stubbed their toe once at Florida State. They deserve everything. As far as being talked about is concerned. But people better start opening their eyes to this Maryland team because they will give Duke all they want and more a week from today. You know how fast you were going? 65. 63. In this town. Isn't the speed limit 65? You don't mess with the law. Yeah, it is. I'm freaking out, man. Don't spit in that cop's burger. It'll like spit to you. Yeah. Burger Puck! The law no. messes with you. Super Troopers. They're coming back, man! Pull the vehicle over! I'm already pulled over! He's already pulled over! He can't pull over any farther! Reddit R starts Friday only in theaters. Man, he had... Cut! Huh? Psst! Down here, there's a new chunky soup! Mom? Huh? Don't fumble that bowl, baby! Whoa. <laughs> Chunky Chicken and Dumplings is loaded with big chunks of chicken, veggies, and hearty homestyle dumplings to fill you up right. Hey, your head's on my shoulders. Your head. Your head's on my shoulder, man.
Dumplings. New Campbell's Chunky Homestyle Classics. Like Mom used to make. She's not your daughter, but if you give her a ride home after school, she might as well be. Carpooling on the wings of Goodyear. Okay, who are you? Uh, the milkman. Do you have a sidekick? No. A nemesis? A what? A bad guy. I'm a people person. Have you been fighting crime long? I don't fight crime. What do you fight? Wheat bones. My never-ending supply of milk. And chocolate milk. Want strong bones? The calcium in milk helps make your bones strong. Join host Chris Rose, Tom Arnold, and a bunch of ex-jocks for the only show that gives you sports comedy commentary plus scores and highlights now available weeknights at the new time of 8 and 11 only on Fox Sports Net. Maryland in front by 22 with 10 20 to play here in Chapel Hill. Ben penetrates gets a shot to go and he'll head to the free throw line. Jawad Williams has come back in for North Carolina. And Williams leading the way for the Heels with 15. You see really good balance for Maryland. They've got three guys in double figures and two guys with nine. North Carolina has struggled a little bit. Jawad Williams has done a nice job. Chris Lang has worked very hard for every one of those 11 points. off a three-point play. Now in the man-to-man -man for North Carolina, Jawad Williams is trying to match up against Lonnie Baxter. Baxter 260 pounds, Williams about 220. Will Cox, jump hook, and came up empty. And Gary Williams is really upset with that particular play by Will Cox. Wilcox still very much the sophomore, Dan. I mean, there are nights where he looks like the best player in the building, and then there are other nights where you literally don't know he's even on Maryland's team. Well, there's no question about that, and interestingly enough about Wilcox, there are times in a game where he disappears as well. He'll play really well for a three or four minute stretch, then you won't hear anything from him. And that's just a matter of experience. You learn that's learning how to play. Juan Dixon is a guy who has himself seemingly involved in every play. And that's a matter of not only being a good player, but knowing how to play the game. And Nicholas shows you how to do the give and go. Maryland team has only lost three times all year. You go back to last season, the Terrapins have won 23 of their last 28. Their five losses were to Arizona. Three times to Duke, and then at Oklahoma earlier this season. All of those games on the road. Talk about one of the oldest plays in basketball. You pass the ball to the wing and cut to the basket. Uh, they give and go, and nobody comes over from North Carolina and helps until it's too late. And that's a play when you have that play in your offense, you almost never get that. <laughs> so. But as you get a look at the assist, Maryland passes the ball very, very well. And one of the key things about that, Maryland team that has so many assists, there's a couple of things that have to happen. Number one, you've got to score a lot of points to have opportunities like that. Number two, you have to have guys who can finish, and Maryland certainly has those. Well, assists, nothing new for this Maryland Terrapin team for the reasons you just talked about, Dan. Second only to the Kansas Jayhawks, one of the two teams Maryland trails in the national poll. Well, those Kansas Jayhawks are pretty good, too. Uh, those of us in ACC country uh, talk all the time about Duke and Maryland, but Kansas, one of the top teams on the top programs in the country, year in and year out. Of course, directed by the Carolina Grand. Roy Williams and Jawad Williams misses the layup. He got sort of in between steps and never caught the ball. 
You know, we saw that total of assist leaders by teams in the country. You had number one, Kansas, number two, Maryland, number three, Bobby Knight and Texas Tech, number four, Notre Dame. I'm surprised the Irish didn't jump over everybody after the game. <laughs> ready, ready. That's how they scored 116 points, played four overtimes. So they get uh, an extra half game. Right. In. What play? Wow. And then Manuel just tacked Wilcox on the way up. He might have torn down the backboard. Talk about being a good passing team. There's the fake. You draw the defender. And the interesting thing there is you knew which defender you drew. And Wilcox just comes right down the lane, step into the open spot. You can't stand there and watch the game. If you want to watch the game, go buy a ticket. Wilcox stepped to the goal, and as a result, he's at the line. Let's check in with Dwayne Ballard. Tom, Chris Wilcox is the only player on the Maryland team that's from North Carolina. He grew up in Whiteville. As a matter of fact, the last time he actually played in a game on this court, he was MVP. In 1999, he led Class 2A Whiteville to the state championship, and he told me earlier today he would like to build upon that success here tonight. Wilcox had to leave the game earlier. Very scary play when he went for a head fake by Capel. And then on the way back down, fell very hard to the floor. Very thankfully, he's all right. Nice interior feed from Williams to Caper. One of the things that Maryland was looking for after the graduation of Terrence Morris was another legitimate scoring threat down inside so people couldn't attack Lonnie Baxter. And Wilcox has certainly supplied that. Of course, that one there. And Carolina will get the basketball. They've also gotten scoring of late from Mouton and a lot of scoring off the bench again tonight from Nichols. And Maryland leads by 19. Everyone knows America Online makes it easy to keep in touch with loved ones, send instant messages to friends, get news, weather, and sports. But did you also know you can get WebMD, America's leading source of health information online? Keyword WebMD. My whole family got the flu and I got help on WebMD. WebMD is the health site that I trust the most. AOL has stuff you won't find anywhere else. WebMD, another great reason to sign up for AOL now. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. Come to Pep Boys, where Jack's been cutting prices on hundreds of items like high-quality 80,000-mile Futura tires, now as low as four for one fifty-nine, or 55,000-mile Futura tires as low as four for one twenty-nine. Get an incredible deal on tires today at Pep Boys. Brown makes work easy. Brown helps me get it done. Brown keeps track of my addresses. Brown tells people their shipments are coming. Brown even prints the labels for me. Brown takes care of me. I love Brown. Desktop shipping made easy. What can Brown do for you? Will she feel the same way if you lose your hair? Sure. She'll just feel it about somebody else. Relax. Rogaine. It's simple, safe, and clinically proven to regrow hair. Does she want you to use Rogaine? Better ask. Buster Douglas Grill Daddy Demo, aisle five. See, what happens is the fat drips off the meat into the pan, so the meat is very lean, very lean. But there's no place for the fat to go. Say what? Well, how could it stay lean if there's no place for the fat to go? You're calling me a liar? No, no, no. No, it's Put just that, that your box. bunker. You How do I get in, in there? You can't get in here. Oh, no, sure you can. Come here. Comedy commentary highlights the best damn sports show, period. You got to pee sometime. Well, I like, I like where we are. You know, we're competing. Um, you know, we, we've got a good rotation. I think guys know their roles right now. And um, we seem to have energy for this time of year. And that's important. And, you know, I think we have a confidence level that is good without being cocky. Uh, we understand that when you take the court this year, you, you have to be ready to play every game, especially our league games. And, uh, but at the same time, we've won some games where we have confidence that if we do play the way we're supposed to play, we're a good basketball team. You know, Dan, you've been around this league for so many, many years. And I think for a lot of people who maybe look at Maryland on the outside, 
the way they maybe view this Maryland team, you know, just as a personality, you think, well, you know, Gary's marching up and down the sidelines. He looks like a maniac over there, and he's clearly into the game and loves his crap. But this is a very enjoyable team to spend time around. Their players are very outgoing. Their staff is just terrific. They're good guys and fun guys to be around. And I think that's a very accurate statement. And as, as you say, you wouldn't get that impression sometime. And uh, Gary Williams is, he's going to get mad again. He's got a time out for the year because he doesn't like the defense. But it's a good group of kids. They're comfortable with one another. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're playing so well. Some of his players are getting an earful right now. The lead is 15. It's 3.30. We're going to be late. Grandpa is storming outside. Oh, but that's that's okay. What are you doing? Take the shotgun. It's starting to hail. Maybe we should turn around. Let's keep moving. Oh, we are already late. Oh, yes. It's bingo tonight, people. Making it to bingo. On the wings of Goodyear. You know how fast you were going? 65. 63. In this town. Isn't the speed limit 65? You don't mess with the law. Yeah, it is. Freaking help me. Don't spit in that cop's burger. It'll like spit to you. Yeah. Burger pop! The law no. messes with you. Super Troopers. They're coming back, man. Over. He can't pull over anymore. Rated R starts Friday only in theaters. I wonder how many of them are ready for the day when they head home for retirement. If they're TD Waterhouse customers, chances are they're prepared. Because TD Waterhouse has an online retirement planner along with retirement specialists at all their branches. It's time you checked in at TD Waterhouse before you head home for work and close shop for good. Open an IRA and get a one-year subscription to Money Magazine. TD Waterhouse, you're in control. Great day to be a sports fan. College basketball, ACC Sunday Night Hoops presented by Staples. And, of course, the Winter Olympics are taking place out in Salt Lake City, Utah. Our special guest tonight had a chance to partake in not only college basketball, but star in the Olympics. Walter Davis... Of the two, which was a greater thrill for you, or is that hard to say? Well, I, I would think um, the uh, Olympics, you know, that mean that meant that we were the best team in the whole world that year. We weren't picked to win the gold medal. They thought Russia would repeat uh, after winning it in 72. We wanted to play Russia again, but we had to beat Yugoslavia. So I would say the, the Olympics uh, was probably one of my most memorable events. What did you, what'd you have? You have three other North Carolina teammates on that club, right? Yes, and the head coach and the oh, assistant yeah. coach. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew Coach Smith and I knew Coach Guthridge were there. Who else did you have on it? Tommy Lagarde, right? Mitch Kupchak? Yes, Mitch Kupchak, Tom Lagarde, Phil Ford, myself. Of course, Phil Ford. I'd start any team any day of the week with that group right there. That's a pretty good group. Yes. And of course, then Walter Davis went on to, to, to star and play many, many years in the NBA. An NBA All-Star, of course, another event that uh, took place today. And, and I would imagine that has to be another highlight on your lengthy resume, Walter Davis. NBA All-Star game. I got to go to six of them and to play with the best uh, players in the league. It was very nice. Turnovers starting to mount up all of a sudden for North Carolina. And this is a situation where this is a North Carolina team that's not content to just come out here and play hard. They're still trying to win the game, and now they know they're behind. They've got a long way to go. They're starting to force things a little bit. Holden forcing up that shot. And Carolina will come the other way down by 18, five and a half to play. Well, with a loss here tonight, and clearly it's not over yet. North Carolina will tie a school record with its 15th loss of the season. The North Carolina team has not lost that many games in 50 years. And also with the loss, the Tar Heels will set a new record for ACC losses in a season. They went 6-8 in 1963. Crowd didn't like the call. 
It'll go against Williams. One of the interesting things to me, Tom, as we continue to talk about North Carolina's struggle, is this group of fans tonight has been very enthusiastic, yep. has been very supportive, and has really gotten into the game. And here they're booing a call that, you know, their team's down by almost well, they're 18 now, and there still is not much time left in the game, and they're still staying, they're still involved in the game. And I think that's a real credit to not only the fans, but to the players from North Carolina. They're out there playing hard, giving the fans something to cheer about. And you said something very interesting, Dan, when I asked you this, just picking your brain about this conference last night. We were talking about different games that we have coming up right here on ACC Sunday night, it's including Maryland at Virginia, or pardon me, Virginia at Maryland, the final game ever at Cole Fieldhouse. And I asked you, you know, for Virginia and you being a, a Virginia alum, did you consider Maryland your biggest rival? And your answer was, no, every school in this conference, with the exception of North Carolina, if you ask that question, they will tell you that North Carolina is their biggest rival. <laughs> That's tough duty, bro. <laughs> I mean, the, the standard of excellence here in North Carolina, mind-boggling. Of course, uh, Frank McGuire here for a while to help establish that, and then Dean Smith for 36 years. The head coach here at North Carolina won 879 games, the most of any college basketball coach in history. Final for the NBA All-Star game, Kobe Bryant returns to his hometown of Philadelphia. Keep in mind one thing as well, Tom, when we're talking about Dean Smith and his record at North Carolina, that tremendous record didn't start until after his first couple of seasons. It took him a couple of seasons. Remember, Dean Smith, who everybody talks about now as if he is some sort of a deity or another. Uh, he was burned in effigy at one point early in his coaching career. So as Dean Smith, uh, as Dean Smith started the Dean Smith era following the Frank McGuire era, there were some struggles here at North Carolina. And I think that's what you're seeing here. Remember, despite the great tradition of the North Carolina program, Matt Doherty is their third coach in five years. And it's just hard to it's just hard to have any any sort of continuity in your recruiting and, and it just there's not much margin for error in today's college basketball. And, and as you bring up also, Dan, it's only Doherty's third year as a head coach. And I think that that you know, when you're trying to learn your trade at this level, and this is no criticism of Matt Doherty. I think he's a very good coach and I think he has the potential to be a great coach. But, oh my. a Kurt Schilling like fastball that hit Blake right in the face. You know, it's a you got to think Randy Johnson didn't throw it or else he wouldn't get up. Well, you got to be paying. Oh, that, that's he had his hands up. The ball hit the hands of Brian Morrison, and so he lost track of it. Bet it still felt real good. <laughs> Big news, Arizona. Blue Grub Chevrolet and Brown and Brown Chevrolet are now number one in the Southwest. To celebrate, we're holding a one-day sale this Saturday. Our lowest prices are posted in over 3,000 Chevys, and you keep the $2,002 rebate. Cavaliers, Impalas, Silverados, Trailblazers, even Tahoes, up to $8,000 off. We're number one, and our one-day sale is this Saturday only at Blue Grub Chevrolet and Brown and Brown Chevrolet. Four Valley locations. The first half was a disgrace. Davis, you keep playing the way you did. You might as well just go home and watch the rest of the game on TV. Okay. Thanks. You just got Cox Digital Cable. I don't think he's coming back. Go to Cox.com and order from our fantastic lineup of sports packages. Available with Cox Digital Cable. Sports highlights on the Arizona News Channel, an official sponsor of the Phoenix Suns, are brought to you by Sanderson Ford, Arizona's only full-line Ford dealer, located on 51st Avenue just north of Bethany Home Road. And by Domino's Pizza, Arizona calls Domino's. Call 480-994-3030. The Arizona News Channel, news and sports, ready when you are. In their last showdown, Luke Walton led Arizona to a thrilling comeback. Now, Jason Capono and UCLA are hungry for redemption. Thursday at 8.30.
No place in the ACC has been tougher for Maryland to win on the road than in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. It was rare indeed that Dean Smith lost to Maryland on his home floor. Bias from outside, and he got it. Glenn Bias with 29. Oh, my! And he made the steal it. Smith trying to drive, because down Bias got it. it away by Bias. Baxter picks it up, and Len Bias says, I want that ball. Bias stole the ball from Baxter. Bias and on the call of the game right there, none other than Dan Buck. That was a pretty exciting game. That was the first game that North Carolina lost here in the Smith Center. And there's Juwan Williams. Sort of indicating that maybe the future is okay for North Carolina. He's played very well. And I was talking about the record at the start of the Dean Smith era. And everybody talks about this long record of 20 wins a year and everything like that. But that streak started during the 1966-1967 season, which was Dean Smith's sixth year as the coach. So it took Dean a while to get things going in the Atlantic Coast Conference. In Dean's third year as the head coach, the 1963-64 season, uh, North Carolina finished fifth in the ACC with a record of six and eight. And their last losing season at Carolina, overall losing season, was Dean Smith's first year. That's the year you were talking about. That the fans were wondering, what in the world is this young fellow from Kansas doing in here? Well, the most amazing thing about that, they had a losing season, and their overall record was 8-9. and nine. Right. You know, you're 8-9, and nine, you play 17 games, it seems like, by the end of November in this day and age. 84-65, Maryland in front, and Walter uh, Davis, our special guest analyst tonight. And Walter, I'm sure that uh, Dean Smith would have to rank in probably your uh, top five all-time most influential people in your life. Oh, yes. Uh, Coach Smith, an uh, amazing man, a uh, good person. Everybody knows him as a, a great basketball coach, but he's just a great person, too, and they don't make any more Dean Smiths like that. So one common thread you hear from so many Carolina players, and Dan, you and I were talking about this earlier today at the shoot-around as Blake is whistled for the foul. You know, Walter, for a lot of people that aren't necessarily Carolina fans, I mean, the first thing you think of, and, and, and my, you know, mom and dad were here at Carolina and Chapel Hill, and, and, and you think it's almost like being brainwashed. I mean, don't, <laughs> don't get me wrong here, but I mean, it is amazing the love and affection that the North Carolina players who played here under Coach Smith and later Coach Gudridge that you guys have for this school. Well, Coach Smith always tried to make the program like a, a, a big family, and uh, he genuinely cares about you as a person, not just as a basketball player here to help the program. And Coach Smith treats everybody the same. Phil Ford was our best player, and we had a guy that walked on, Woody Coley, and everybody got treated the same. Bouton hitting at the other end, 86-67. Again, Tom, I'll make the comment that the fans have stayed around and they have stayed excited about this, and that has to be a real positive for that man right there as he's taking a team. And uh, at this point, unless they win the ACC tournament championship, then in effect, they're just playing out the string, but they are certainly not performing that way like they want the season to be over. They've come out here and played one of the best teams in the country. They've played very hard, not with great success, unfortunately, but. They certainly have represented the University of North Carolina very well. well. Let's take a look at the ACC standings brought to you by Toyota. Maryland and Duke on that collision course one week from today. And that, of course, will decide a number of things. But keep in mind that Maryland, uh, they're going to be paid a visit not only by Duke, but they're going to be paid a visit by Wake Forest. They're going to be paid a visit by Virginia. And so that's a tough place to go. Duke still has to go on the road to Maryland. Duke still has to go on the road to Wake Forest. And Duke still has to go on the road to Virginia. Where they those, lost last year. And those are not easy places to play. I'm not saying Duke can't get it done in all those places. They certainly can, but. Five teams, you think, Dan, from the ACC and the NCAA tournament? I would think that that's the way it looks right now. I think that certainly uh, the, the surprise team in that five, con considering where they were thought about at the, in the preseason, would be the North Carolina State Wolfpack. But I really think they've played themselves into position. I'll be surprised 
if they are not ranked in the top 25 when the next polls come out. Because the Wolfpack, they've won 18 games. They've won seven games in the ACC. And barring a complete collapse, I think that they're in the tournament. And I think, obviously, Duke and Maryland and Wake Forest and Virginia. Now, Virginia, they, that was a big win against Clemson. They're only 5-5 five and five in the conference. They have a very weak non-conference schedule. So uh, I think they, they need to play well down the stretch. But I, I think unless, again, barring a complete collapse there, then they're in the NCAA tournament. And Maryland, along with Duke, two of the number one seeds. I right would say now. so. Uh, right now, if you had to if you had to pick the tournament field and see the tournament field, I think that certainly that would be the case. It'd be interesting to see who would get uh, maybe the final one. If the season ended today, it would certainly be Duke, Kansas, and Maryland, the three number one seeds. If you had to go to another, who would it be? Would it be Cincinnati? Would it be Oklahoma? Well, I think... Uh, Certainly, those would be the, the those would be the next two teams you would think about. And Cincinnati really I mean, made a great statement with a win at Wake Forest uh, in very impressive fashion. Uh, Oklahoma, they've got a big game with Oklahoma State coming up, and that always uh, is an interesting affair there. So there's still a lot of basketball left to be played. But I, I agree with you if. You were doing it right now. I think the first three are obvious, and then I think that fourth seed, I would I would say either Oklahoma or Cincinnati. Well, it's been a real pleasure having the great Walter Davis with us here tonight. Ninth all-time leading scorer at North Carolina. And got a chance to see that marvelous videos put together. Jerseys in the rafters, and uh, some of the names up there that hang here at the Dean Smith Center. Walter Davis is number 24. One of them. Walter, it's been a real pleasure having you with us here tonight. Continued success to you. All right, thank you for having me. I, I've truly enjoyed it. Walter Davis had a big standing ovation when they introduced him here at the Dean Dome. <laughs> well, you get to get all this. Now, now I, I will tell you about a black mark on the collegiate basketball record of Mr. Walter Davis, and he probably doesn't even remember this. But uh, I actually scored my career high of 19 points in a game when I was being defended by Walter Wow. <laughs> what do you think about that, Walter? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that's what he would say. Well, he knows how to hurt a guy, doesn't he? No, 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 no. I had a very nondescript playing career. Hey, if you scored North 19 points in a game against North Carolina, <laughs> Everybody and his brother <laughs> dreams about doing something like that. You kidding me? <laughs> maybe, maybe Dan got those at the free throw line. Actually, were you I, hacking, Walter? I was hacking it. Actually, I was 11 out of 12 from the free throw line. How about line. that? <laughs> this wasn't a big event in my life or anything. I just remember the details even now. <laughs> Carolina. But I, I, I could not let Walter go without pointing that out. So I apologize, Walter. That's OK. <laughs> North Carolina, we mentioned earlier, the loss tonight will tie a school record 15th loss. will set a new record in ACC losses in a season with nine of those. But Chris Lang, the senior, says there are many lessons that have been learned this year. Test my character. I've learned um, who I am. Um, you learn who your friends are. Actually, when, when you're losing, believe it or not, you know, people don't tend to talk to you as, as much. Um, You've just really found out who your true friends are and who you really are. And I'm glad this has actually happened this year because I've, I've grown and matured a lot more and I know where I'm at in life and I've, I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. Good for him. And a good game tonight for Chris Lang. He's worked very, very hard. And for a guy who's a senior who's experienced, you know, he's been to Final Fours. Uh, it would be very easy to just quit on the season, and certainly he hasn't done that. And, uh, I was very impressed with Chris yesterday when we were able to talk with him because you know these kids from North Carolina, everybody wants to ask them the same questions all the time, and he was not only patient, but he was, uh, he was very friendly and uh, just seemed to carry himself very, very well. Meanwhile, for this Maryland team, Dan, you brought it up at the beginning of the game here tonight. Preseason ranked number two in the country after going to the Final Four a year ago. And they continue to get better and better and better as this season goes along. And somebody at home may be saying, well, well big deal, that's the idea. But for a lot of highly touted teams as the season goes on, not all of them get better. 
Well, you're absolutely right. And of course, the yardstick by which everyone in this conference is measured right at the moment is the yardstick that's going to be laid next to the Maryland Terrapins on February the 17th. And that is going to be a tremendous test. And the problem for Maryland is to keep in mind that if you win that game, your season's not over. Right. If you lose that game, your season's not over. You have to treat that game as just another game. Now, of course, it's a much bigger game than that. And obviously, it's going to be great atmosphere. And uh, it, those are wonderful games to participate in. But it's, it's not the end of everything, no matter what happens. Under 30 seconds to go here. Jawad Williams going to go to the basket. Gets hacked on the way up by Wilcox. Jawad Dixon had a disappointing night. Defended well against Duke by the combination of Dante Jones and Chris Duhon. Had only 10 points in that game. Tonight he's our Staples player of the game. Quietly tonight. 18 points, 8 rebounds, 4 assist ho hum. We heard Matt Doherty tell us that Juan Dixon is a guy who doesn't go looking for his shots all the time, just gets them within the context of the offense. And I think that that's one of his best characteristics because if you're a guy that's got to got get, got to have the ball and go looking for your shot all the time, that causes everybody else to stand around and watch you, and that's not Maryland basketball. And, and it was very interesting in this game. I thought Maryland they didn't. They, they seized control of the game. They didn't blow North Carolina out right away, but they seized control early by going inside to Lonnie Baxter. He had 10 points early. They established that. And then they got contributions from everybody else. And that's one of the keys to having a really, really great year is that you get contributions from everybody. I thought Ryan Randall coming off the bench tonight gave Gary Williams some real good minutes. Drew Nicholas had nine points in the first half alone. Now this is a very very interesting Maryland team a lot of interesting possibilities and they've got Georgia Tech before they take on Duke that everybody in ACC country is really looking forward to that game next Sunday. I think everybody in any part of the country is looking forward <laughs> to that game next Sunday. Uh oh look out here. And Morrison going to foul Wilcox on the way up. Next Sunday night, we will be at Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem, 19th ranked Wake Forest. We'll take on Roger Mason Jr. and the 10th ranked Virginia Cavaliers. Our special guest will be the former Demon Deacon star, Muggsy Bogues. Skip Prosser, a former assistant under Virginia head man Pete Gillen at Xavier University. Next Sunday, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. And I'll tell you what, Tom, that game is going to be a critical game for each of those teams. And Virginia Wake Forest games always tend to be tremendous battles. And the fact that you've got two coaches who know one another so well only adds a little extra spice to the whole thing. But that, that will be a very, very good basketball game. I think it'll be a whole lot of fun to watch the styles that those teams play. And it will be a critical game for both of the teams. There's Lang again. What a night he's had. Lang had four points at halftime. He tacks on 17, pardon me, 19 in the second half. But Gary Williams and the Maryland Terrapins are off to their best 22 game start in Maryland basketball history. And that is a long and illustrious basketball history. Terrapins 19 and 3. And they have been exceptional in conference play away from home. They're now 5-1. And, and Dan, as you mentioned, they have all the other heavyweights in the ACC now coming to Cole Field. What Maryland has done, it's like in a basketball game where Maryland creates opportunities for the team with steals, with good play, now with defensive plays. Now you have to convert those opportunities. So they have really put themselves in great position, winning on the road. Now can they come through and can they win at home? particularly as you very aptly point out against the heavyweights of the ACC. On Dixon with 18. Contributions from a host of Maryland Terrapins here tonight. Dixon, Baxton, Luton, Wilcox, Blake, Nicholas right on down the line. Let's check in with Wayne Bauer. 
Juan Dixon, another solid game for you. You guys were able to take control of this game at a certain point. Yeah, we just wanted to, to play hard for 40 minutes. You know, we had a week off, and we knew at times that we would be flat, you know, but I think we worked hard for 40 minutes, and things is going to get better for us as long as we keep on working hard. How prepared do you think you are now for this stretch you have, the final run? Um, I think we're peaking at the right time. Like I said, you know, we had a week off, and, and things are a little shaky at times, but we have a great team here. As long as we stick together and keep working hard, things will work out for us. Juan Dixon, 18 points. Congratulations. Bring in Coach Gary Williams now. Coach Williams, North Carolina played hard, but in the end, your superior talent just warmed down, took control of the game. Well, Matt Doherty played hard when he's the player, so his teams are going to play. They're going to reflect that, and uh, Carolina is getting better. You know, they're working very hard, so they will get better, and they got some young guys out there that are starting to come around. I was pleased that we got the win because we've been off for a week, and I was very concerned with that because funny things happen sometimes during that week in terms of how you play. But we played well enough tonight. We did a pretty good job with our offense, but we have to get better defensively. You had nice production off the bench. Randall, Nicholas, good minutes, productive minutes. Yeah, well, we've been getting that, and that's important to our team. We're not a five-man team, and we need the eight to play to continue to play well. Finally, with this seven-day respite behind you now, how do you feel for this stretch run? Duke, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest. Yeah, I feel great. You know, we play Georgia Tech. They're probably playing as well as anyone in the league. And uh, we have to be ready Wednesday. But it's great to be back playing again. You want to play games this time of year. Coach Gary Williams, congratulations. His Maryland Terrapins over the North Carolina Tar Heels. Tom? All right, Dwayne, thank you very much. We have plenty of post-game coverage coming your way on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Number three, Maryland downs North Carolina 92 to 77. Let's send it back to Los Angeles in our studio with our main man, Kevin Frazier. Tom, thanks a lot, and welcome to the ACC Sunday Night Hoop post-game report. Lots of scores and highlights to get to, plus we'll head back out to the Dean Dome in a moment. But first, let's update a few other scores from around the ACC. We start with a big one, Clemson in number 10, Virginia. And in the first half, Travis Watson trying to keep hope alive for the Cavaliers. He had a double-double with 20 and 10, but in the second half, here come the Tigers. Chris Hobbs banging the glass. Tigers were trailed by just three, but in the end, Cavaliers pull away the defensive pressure, and then Roger Mason, the spicy jack, he had 23 points. Virginia wins 85-71. to 71. Larry Shiat's team has dropped eight straight. Meanwhile, Virginia climbs back to 500 in conference play. North Carolina State visiting Florida State. Great ball movement, Trevor. Harvey, the finish with flavor. Seminoles down by three at the half. Steve Robinson's team in trouble because in the second half, Wolfpack come out on fire. Scooter Sherrill, the bucket, he had 16 points. The Wolfpack's lead would grow to as many by as 18, but Delvon Arrington brings Florida State back. Arrington had 19 points. Seminoles got as close as four, but then Anthony Grundy puts it away. The great shot over his head. Wolfpack wins 76 to 67. State completes the sweep over the Seminoles. They face Duke next at Cameron on Thursday. All right, let's take a peek at the ACC standings. So Maryland keeps pace with Duke. Both teams have just one loss in conference play. And let's not forget that Wake, Duke, and Maryland all face each other in the coming weeks. And speaking of Wake Forest, next week in a key conference matchup, Skip Oster and the Demon Deacons face his former boss, Pete Gillen, and the Virginia Cavaliers right here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. And uh, by the way, our special guest for that game, the greatest point guard in Wake Forest history. Muggsy Bogues will join our broadcast team. Tip-off is 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. On the way, we'll check in on the rest of the nation. A quick question, are the Miami Hurricanes for real? A lot of people think that Perry Watson's team has played too soft a schedule. Well, today they face Boston College and Big East play. We're going to show you the pictures from that game in just a moment. Arizona has a nightly sports report dedicated to hometown teams and hometown highlights. Your teams, your town, your show. The Arizona Sports Report, nightly at 10 on Fox Sports Net. It's time to take on the establishment. Turn off the phone company and turn on Cox Business Services. We're the better alternative. Reliable phone connections and high-speed internet access with local customer care that promotes true inner peace. Right now, get a flexible telephone and internet package for one low price. Call toll-free or visit us online. Cox Business Services. Plug in. Do business. 
For 11 years, my family has owned and operated Bell Acura, and I would always hear how my friends and family would come and buy cars and just love the service and the way that they were treated. They always say, that's the way car shopping should be. Now I have something to really get excited about. Introducing the brand new Integra. They call it the RSX. It's sporty, fast, and fun. So come visit us and test drive the new RSX. And tell them Christy sent you. Welcome back to the ACC Sunday Night Hoops postgame show. Let's quickly update what has been a wild day in the top 25. We start with the number 12, Miami, visiting Boston College. And that's why it's always important to box out on the break. Ryan Sidney with the slam. Eagles up 23-15 early with the Hurricanes answer. Darius Rice, wide open, attacks the rack and gets the bucket. Miami trailed at the half. This is the problem for Miami all day long. Troy Bell, too much of that guy right there. Bell had 24 points in uh, Perry Watson's club fall, 76 to 63. Number 12, Miami is upset by BC for the second time in less than two weeks. Oklahoma State, the 14th ranked team in the land, visiting Fresno State. Victor Williams, uncontested layup. Oklahoma State up 44-42. Tark rubbing his head, it's all right. Melvin Eli, great pass to Noel Phoenix for the bucket. Eli had a double-double. We're tied at 50, and then in the end, Fresno pulls away. Felix one more time. Tough bucket. It's good. The Bulldogs and Tark by the towel. It's all good. 58-52, the final score. Cowboys have lost three of their last four and haven't won on the road since January 12th. Ohio State takes on a number 16, Michigan State, and the big deal here, Buckeyes lose again, and they are knocked out of a tie atop the Big Ten with Indiana. Move on to the Big East and Pittsburgh and Syracuse. First half, Preston Shumpert. It's crazy, but it's good. Part of an 8-0 run. Shumpert had 28 points to lead the Orangemen. Second half, pit on the break. Mark McCarroll through the lane. Great pass, great bucket. Part of a 12-0 run for Pitt. They cut the lead to six, and they keep coming. Panthers pull away with the defense. Brandon Knight, the steal, and the layup. And how about this one? Panthers go into the Carrier Dome and win 75-63. Pittsburgh gets its first win at the Carrier Dome since March of 97. The Cues has dropped five of their last seven. You know, this is a big week as far as the uh, top 25 is concerned. The Terps get another crack at Duke Sunday. There's Bedlam in the Big 12, and Tubby takes his team takes on his former team, Georgia. And don't forget about a pair of games that you can catch right here on the net. Ludolson's surprising wild catch rolling to Westwood to take on the Bruins on Pac-10 Thursday in what is basically a must-win game for UCLA if they hope to stay in the conference race. Game time is 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific, right here on the net. And hey, these two guys had a monster game in the first meeting as Arizona rallied from a 14-point deficit to knock off to knock off UCLA. Both of Jasons played big. It was the Jason, as in Jason Gardner, who walked away with the W. He had 19 points and six assists. Hey, uh, much more ahead on ACC Sunday Night Hoops postgame report. MJ, his airness, back at the All-Star game. We'll have pictures from Philly as MJ does his thing against the other brightest stars in the association. You know how fast you were going? 65. 63. In this town. Isn't the speed limit 65? You don't mess with the law. Yeah, it is. Freaking out, man. Don't spit in that cop's burger. It'll like spit to you. Yeah. Burger punk! The law no. messes with you. Super Troopers. They're coming back, man. Pull the vehicle over. I'm already pulled over. He's already pulled over. He can't pull over any farther. Ready to Starts Friday only in theaters. Huh? Psst, down here, there's a new chunky soup. Mom? Huh? Don't fumble that bowl, baby. Whoa. <laughs> chunky chicken and dumplings is loaded with big chunks of chicken, veggies, and hearty homestyle dumplings to fill you up right. Hey, your head's on my shoulders. Your head. Your, head. your head's on my shoulder, man. Dumplings. New Campbell's Chunky Homestyle Classics. Like Mom used to make. Everyone knows America Online makes it easy to keep in touch with loved ones, send instant messages to friends, 
get news, weather, and sports. But did you also know you can get WebMD, America's leading source of health information online? Keyword WebMD. My whole family got the flu, and I got help on WebMD. WebMD is the health site that I trust the most. AOL has stuff you won't find anywhere else. WebMD, another great reason to sign up for AOL now. America Online, so easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE. She's not your daughter, but if you give her a ride home after school, she might as well be. Carpooling on the wings of Goodyear. Virginia takes care of a business this afternoon, earlier today. Next week, a key conference matchup as Skip Prosser and the Demon Deacons face his former boss, Pete Gillen, and the Virginia Cavaliers right here on ACC Sunday Night Hoops. And by the way, our special guest, the greatest point guard in Wake Forest history, and uh, he was a great player. It's just not the fact that he's from Baltimore, why I'm hyping him up. Muggsy Bogues will join our broadcast team. Tip-off is 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 Pacific. All right, we move on to the association in just one contest on the NBA's docket, the All-Star Game. A little foreshadowing for you here. You know, the last guy to drop more than 30 in the All-Star Game was Michael Jordan. And as you know, everybody wants to be like Mike. There's Michael back at the All-Star Game and uh, things sloppy early. Chris Webber misses the dunk and then Jordan. I know, getting old is tough. Jordan misses the slap. It was fun. It's the All-Star Game. Nobody really cares. Dunk of the day. Tracy McGrady throws it off the glass. Everybody's looking at the ball. Tracy, meanwhile, finishes. But the man, Kobe Bryant, back home in Philly. And Kobe booed lustily by the Philly crowd, even when he took home the MVP award. Kobe scores 31 points. He took 25 shots, more than any, 10 more than anyone else on the team. And the teams combined for 23 3 Pointers, you know, a few Carolina alums making noise in the All-Star game. And speaking of those guys, that's it from here in L.A. You've been watching the ACC Sunday Night Hoops post-game show. Let's head back to Chapel Hill where Tom Brenneman has a few final thoughts. Tommy. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. Maryland goes to 19-3 with a 92-77 win. And Dan Bonner, you said at the beginning of the game tonight you really like the way Maryland is playing, getting better and better as the year rolls on, and now for the final six will be at Cole Fieldhouse. And, Tom, I have not seen anything. I didn't see anything tonight that would change that opinion. I think this is a Maryland team that's really coming on, and they're coming on at the right time. Best record ever in Maryland history. After 22 games, they go to 19-3, and three, and North Carolina ties an all-time record, losing for the 15th time and sets a new record for losses in an ACC season. 92-77 our final. Join us next week for ACC Sunday Night Hoops. Number 10, Virginia. At number 19, Wake Forest. It should be an intriguing battle. Remember, Pete Gillen was a head coach. Skip Prosser, his assistant at Xavier. We'll get underway at 6.30. For Dan Bond and our crew, I'm Tom Brenneman. Good night.